Okay, good evening. Today is Tuesday, September 10, 2019. I call the select board meeting to order. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, is visible, liberty and justice, and justice for all. I missed that voice in the back of my head. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is public forum. Uh, is there anyone that would like to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government? Seeing none. Okay, moving on. Second thing would be a proclamation. Um, Will Dion, but I don't see him here just yet, so maybe we'll hold off on that for a little while until he gets here, uh, assuming he is coming. <coughs> Uh, the next thing would be the, <coughs> the Belladora Corp. Are they not here? They're not here? They're not here yet. Okay. Um, so how about the budget calendar? Norman, uh, why don't you take us through the budget calendar? Yes. Um, in, in your packet, I included the proposed budget calendar. And in terms of process, you'll recall that the last charter review uh, created a provision that allows the town manager to collaborate with the school committee, the appropriations committee, and the board of selectmen. And therefore, I'm here tonight to seek your approval of the calendar. Uh, I should point out that the school committee has reviewed and does approve the calendar is proposed. Uh, we are now scheduling a conversation with the appropriations committee to do the same. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Awesome. So that's so it. We're on board. <coughs> We don't Appropriations committee, no, not on board. We, we have not met with them yet. No, school committee. School committee, they're on board. Good. We don't need any motions or anything like that, right? Um, it would be helpful to get the board to say you support the calendar as proposed. Calendar. I will entertain a motion. I make the motion we accept the town manager's calendar for the budget. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Stand. Carries. Good. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Kamalu. With your permission, Mr. Chair, um, I'm also taking this opportunity to invite you to uh, contact me and share any preliminary thoughts that you might have regarding formulation of the budget message. We intend, with the Chair's permission, to include that subject matter on the agenda September 24th. Good. Excellent. Thank you. So moving on to the consent agenda. The con consent agenda items are, number one, approve the August 13 minutes. Number two, approve marathon fund requests from uh, A, Friends of Hopkinton for $1,832.25 for rental equipment of, for family day, and B, Hopkinton High School volleyball for $4,000 for a volleyball net system at the high school, and three, to accept a $40, dona $40 donation to the ambulance fund from Patricia and Richard Graves in memory of Georgia Strait. So moved. Would any member I'd like to break out any items for a separate vote? There are none. So moved. Okay. <laughs> Second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And any abstentions? Carries. Uh, number six, the parade permit. Um, for, uh, can we do that without them here? Mr. Camelo, the CF Cycle for Life. Mm -hmm. 705. Uh, how about the Knights of Columbus anniversary dinner at St. John's? Anyone here for that? Mm -hmm. You're a knight? Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? <laughs> what aren't you? Mason, knight, lion. <laughs> You're a casserole of stuff. Um, so how about the... In our packet, we kind of we had everything that was, uh, that was needed. Does anyone have any... Anything that jumps out at them for that would stop us from uh, approving a special alcohol license for the Knights of Columbus anniversary dinner at St. John's or the alcohol license for dance performance reception at the HCA? Um, I like to break out the Knights of Columbus only because they've asked us to waive the fee. Okay. They are not charging anything for this. It's sim simply a celebration okay. for themselves. So. Okay. So hearing... Uh, no, uh, no pushback or questions. I'd like to go ahead and um, hear a motion for the KFC anniversary mm -hmm. dinner at St. John's. I'd like to make, yeah, okay, I'll make a motion 
to brew a specialty tempor special temporary alcohol license for the Knights of Columbus for the 60th anniversary dinner on October 19th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at St. John's Church. And in that motion, do I hear that you would like to waive the fees? And uh, if we could also, yes, waive the fees. Second. Okay, any further questions, discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, carries. Uh, Mr. Catino, how about a motion for the dance performance reception at the HCA? Yes. Uh, basically the same. I'd like uh, to make a motion to approve a special temporary alcohol license for the Echo Dance Collaborative. <clears throat> a reception following dance performance at Hopkins Center for the Arts on September 21st from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. Um, any further? Oh, we need it seconded. I'll second it, but I have a question. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Kamalo, if I could please, Bacon's yes. Wine and Spirits will be supplying alcohol. So they are new, and as far as I can gather, to the HCA mix with alcohol licenses. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe so, but I believe they're also pre-qualified by the state. So they're okay. pre-qualified, which works with that license that we have in place, correct? Yep. Okay. Um, and this is, so this would count as one of their additional of annual events, yes? Correct. Because the license we have for them to have alcohol in general over there s stipulates, I don't know how many it is, 10, 12, something it's like that. 30. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're in all that's in order and we're not going beyond those numbers. Correct. <coughs> okay, all set. Okay, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Extensions, carries, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kamalo, it's probably not appropriate to do the parade permit for life without the, the people being here. I mean, the parade permit for CF Psycho for Life without them here, is it? Unless if the board, if the board has questions, the board yes, we should questions wait. But if the board that? has no questions, I think the board should proceed. Okay. I they, gave us a, they gave us a ton of information. Yep. So. Yeah. Oh, this, uh, oh, tons. Yeah, okay, <laughs> good. So I will entertain a motion on the <laughs> CF Psycho for Life. Yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve a parade permit for the 2019 Cycle for Life event on October 5th, 2019 from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Second. Second. Seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Good. So, Mr. Kamalo, I think we will jump over to... Let's take a look what we're going to jump over to. We can't do the planning board. Can we do the uh, HCA with Legacy mm. without, without them here? No? Um, uh, perhaps we should wait for Okay, we can wait. Yeah. Uh, how about the notice of taking? I think we can do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's skip over to that. Uh, <laughs> So this item before the board follows up on the vote under Article 48 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting to accept Hunters Ridge Way and Penny Meadow Lane as public ways. There's a legal process to follow when the streets are accepted and Town Council has prepared notice of taking for the execute. I will accept a motion. That's you. I, make a, I can make a motion. Okay. There's that we motion. sign the there's, there's an order actual, of taking yeah, for Hunters okay. Ridge Way. Oh, okay. We have a motions document. <laughs> HCA not, not, that you, not that you wouldn't get it right, but it's just to make sure okay. we don't go to court or anything. Well, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, uh, in pursuant of uh, Mass General Laws 79 um, 7C and Article 48 of the May 6, 2019 uh, town meeting to execute notices of taking relative to the orders of taking recorded on September 6, 2019 the Middlesex South Rist District Registry of Deeds to accept and take ownership of the roadways known as Hunter's Ridge Way and Penny Meadow Way. Lynn. Uh, so do we have any further discussion? Oh, first of all, I need a second. Second. Okay, any further discussion on that? Uh, before we vote on this, I saw someone had their hand up. Do you have a? I thought if missed the public comment. We tried to get here between the 6 and 610. Oh, <laughs> uh, you did, but you know what? We're, we're moving along, so I'll, uh, after we vote on this, I'll let you jump up and, and that's it. Okay. Uh, all right, so hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? It carries? <coughs> all right. Um, back to the future. So is there anyone that would like to share their ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government? By all means, please step up. 
<laughs> I don't know if there's anyone in the audience that falls into that. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Good. So we're rushing around here, <laughs> a couple yeah. of jobs and everything. Uh, we live at 129 Hayward Street, mm -hmm. and um, I guess we're here just out of concern. It really boils down to the whole threat of Triple E, um, especially hearing now that 500 mosquitoes in Ashland were tested and um, and have Triple E. I guess what it comes down to across the street where we live, recently there's a new build across from us, and it's caused a huge puddle. Um, that, that as a result of this new build. Um, what were the dimensions? I think you said- Oh, you I just measured it today. There hasn't been much rain and it currently is 24 feet long. Huh. When it rains, it goes halfway out into the road. 120, what did you say, 129 Hayward? Hayward, yeah. So give me a landmark. Are you by twin-, twin um, A couple of doors before Sandy Beach parking lot. Okay. Yeah, Okay. so I guess, um, I was gonna say the, huh, lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> Which so, yes, I've had conversations with the DPW about it, and um, it did get back to me telling me um, there was a procedure involved in, in that they have to involve the Conservation Commission and get different permissions and stuff like that. And I get it. There's procedures with everything, and unfortunately things take a lot longer than you want them to. Um, but I guess now I'm just appearing before the board to see if there's anything that can be done to kind of expedite the situation, because we're just very concerned for not only our health, but even though the summer's pretty much over, a lot of people still walk down Hayward Street to get to Sandy Beach and yep. walking through that puddle area. So I guess that is the concern, just to express our, our urgency with, with the matter. Sure. So and that's just, the puddle um, across from our house, but there's also another concern. Right. Well, just a little bit on that. Uh, when the house was built two years ago now, I think, yeah. there was a puddle on both sides of the house, and I had contacted the town, and they came out, and they fixed the one side. It was great, wonderful. And I called and said, when are you going to fix the other side? And they said it was the owner's responsibility. And so yeah. then this has been going on. It's probably been there a year. Okay. Um, a year. Yeah. So, yeah, and the other issue is Sandy Beach parking lot. So a few years ago, I think it was three years ago at town meeting, that the um, renovation project was approved and everything with the parking lot and the beach looks great and everything's wonderful but the parking lot never was done okay. so I'm not sure I never heard any plans on when that was to be done but that parking lot before I mean that puddle before I left was eight feet long yep. without rain and when it rains a lot it's basically half of the parking lot okay. and it's a school bus stop all day long <laughs> so I was just curious on that one too so excellent points that you brought up um, I would get with our town manager. It's nothing that we can fix right here, yeah. um, but I would get with our town manager. He can work, kind of be the liaison between you and the DPW and, and work to get a resolution on that. Okay. I right. do have a little DIY suggestion. <clears throat> um, a little bit of vegetable oil kind of coats the, the upper surface and the mosquitoes can't breed. It's pretty close to the lake. Yeah. Vegetable oil. We're talking about a tablespoon. Okay. You just pour just vegetable pour. on the puddle? Just about a tablespoon. <laughs> it doesn't take much, and it spreads thin, and the mosquitoes can't, uh, can't breathe. Or if they're Italians, you can put olive oil. Yeah. <laughs> Italian we're going to price yeah. chopper from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get it at Cololis. I mean, I think, um, I think you should definitely get together with the town manager, uh, as uh, you know, there, there may be other avenues. Yeah. But just a suggestion of old school way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, jumping back to our agenda, uh, we had on the agenda the 26.2 foundation update that has been moved. That's going to be on the on the next um, on the next agenda, which I believe is September 24. Um, and we are still a little bit ahead of a schedule here. Uh, maybe more than a little. We we'll take a lot of pride in. Uh, can we do the annual appointments, Mr. Kamala? Oh, hold on, just a moment. You got one minute. Sure. Sure. Jump up. One minute. You can have two. Okay. Um, my name is Beth Kelly. 47 year resident of 5 Ash Street, Hopkinton. Um, the downtown Carter project is a financial disaster for Hopkinton. 90 property owners have been asked to donate a portion of their, 
property, including stone walls, lawns, and trees, to the town of Hopkinton for this project. Out of 90, only three have agreed to do this. One is the town, the property, a portion of the town cemetery on Main Street. The other two have asked, been asked to donate very insignificant square footage of their property, like less than 500 square feet. You've probably seen some of these signs around town. Mm -hmm. No easements mean 87 property owners will not donate their property. Where will the town get the money to buy off these owners? More state money? Higher taxes? Who knows? Please stop this project now. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kamalu. Um, how about, can we do the annual appointments? Um, I believe... Pretty straightforward. Um, we don't have any... Perhaps, yeah, it, how about if we move over to the town manager's report? Sure, jump on it. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Quick highlights on uh, the Main Street Corridor project. Uh, on uh, August 13th and August 27th, we held open house sessions. Uh, we had 16 residents at the first one and then 15 residents at the second one. Uh, in both meetings, we had representatives from MassDOT. Uh, we did give the residents impacted by the temporary easements requests uh, the opportunity to ask questions, seek clarifications, uh, and we are continuing to address some of the questions that have come up. We also have had MassDOT uh, working specifically on the sizing of the temporary easements for the electrical connections. Uh, we have identified a process that is actually reducing those easements uh, in size. You may recall that the original request was, in fact, influenced more by the anticipation that we may require easements from the property line going all the way to the front door, because at that point we did not know where the electrical connections are. I can uh, report to the board that this week we were able to send out uh, our hired uh, electrical inspector working alongside the town's electrical inspector and they visited most of the properties that are impacted by this, and clearly the size of the easements um, are going to be reduced. The sizes of the easements are going to be reduced. And then uh, we also had a meeting with the utility companies on August 29th. Uh, this was followed by a site walk, and coming out of that discussion, I think, is a continuing conversation with Eversource relative to what happens to the poles that are in at the either ends of the undergrounding project. We are scheduled to commence the formal process with the Hockington Historic District on September 18th. Uh, we've spent, I think, the last year working with the commission as well as a subcommittee uh, to identify items that would require certificates of appropriateness. And that formal process begins on September 18th. MIPA filings were submitted at the end of August, um, and we are now working with uh, the respective state departments to address any concerns that they may have. Uh, and so far, we have addressed at least 13 public record requests on the project. Yep. <coughs> Mr. Yes. Kamala, if I could, please. Um, why do we use the term donate the easement or donate land for the easement? Why do we use that term donate? It is an option that is required, we are required by law to state the options that are available to the resident. But if it's a temporary easement, 
It's not a taking. Why do they have to donate anything? Why can't we just tell them we're going to place in temporary easements so that the construction workers can walk around and not walk in the middle of traffic to get the job done and then the easement goes away? I think the terminology is creating a great deal of angst. Mm -hmm. And I think we just saw some of that here this evening. Yeah. We're not taking anyone's land, are we? For we have identified that the groupings of easements that have been identified. Okay. They're temporary easements. They are the bulk of the easements that this project the bulk is seeking. Of the easements are temporary. Yes. Okay. So let's, and just, then, let's just focus on those for a second. Yeah. For those bulk of the easements that are temporary, <laughs> why do we associate the term donate with those easements? Required by law. So it's a state law requirement. Federal. But the fact it's a federal. Is, it's a give me the Reader's Digest version of what that means. That means, based on the conversation between the town and the landowner and an appraisal, the individual homeowner chooses not to ask for a fee from the town. So, so when, a, when a homeowner says they don't want to donate their land for the easement, what they're saying is they don't want to grant us a license to be on the land for a certain period of time and then that license expires. So in other words, they're, they're looking for either, they're either looking for compensation yes. yep. for us to step on their land while we do this work, but we're not taking that land, correct, in this temporary situation. Correct. Or they're looking for a way, frankly, to object to the project in general, and this is their means to do so. Is that a fair statement? That's fair. There's a little bit of politics in that, I understand that. Exactly. But that's a reality too. Yes. Right? I mean, we have to start calling this for what it is. Okay? So we have temporary easements mm -hmm. that folks are not donating one square inch of their land. But we're not buying one square inch of their land. We're just accessing their land for a certain period of time. And then the easement goes away. And every blade of grass comes right back to where it was. Correct. Is that correct? That so that's correct. the bulk of the easements. Yes. I think the challenge we have in town is there's a there's a false narrative out there that the town is going to take a bunch of people's land to do the corridor project. And I would have a problem with that too. But that's not the case. And when we've had folks come in and talk about how we're taking their land and it's gonna be a financial nightmare for the town, etc., with all due respect, that's a ridiculous statement. And we have to, we have to, we have to address that. As unpleasant as it may be for some, it needs to be addressed. I would never support a project that's going to take people's land. Okay, this is not taking anyone's land. We're asking to step on your land, and we're asking to walk on the land, and we got to walk up to the front door and ring the doorbell and say we're going to turn the power off now, and then we're going to walk up the front door and ring the bell again, say we're going to turn the power back on now. There's things we have to do for the betterment of the community. But that's not taking their land. But there's, there is some undergrounding of the utilities that we would have to access their land for. Yes. Yeah. Right? Am I correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But once but you upgraded. cut that slice in, you, put, you take a little trench thing, you put yeah. a trench in, you put the power in yeah. there, and then you cover that trench back over. Right. Slum it up and seed it up. And so those are the easements the that would track. have to be done. But those are all temporary. So those are the temporary ones. So what are the next groupings? Permanent easements. Permanent easements. Yes. Uh, these constitute existing um, easements um, implied by, for example, where you have a guy wire from a pole that is on somebody's land. So we have situations that are already like that. We also have had uh, instances where um, perhaps during the construction of a sidewalk, that sidewalk was constructed on private property. So we are correcting for that. We also have easements where, uh, for example, right across the bike lane would be coming on private property, right across uh, the Pantai as well as the adjoining parcels. Those are new permanent easements. But for the most part, as we said, we've been saying uh, we're looking for temporary easements. Uh, yeah. the, the, other, the, other, the other obvious grouping of uh, permanent easements is the conversation that we have been having with the cross point for many years which is the intersection itself. Yes. Okay. Any, any other types of easements that you can think of? No. I, I apologize for this. Yeah. Let me finish this last piece. No. So for Pantai, for example, that's a permanent easement. 
So there's a sidewalk on Pantai's side of Main Street right now. Mm -hmm. Is that sidewalk going closer to the, or is something going closer to their restaurant? Or is it just staying within the current hardscape, if you will, that's already there? Yeah, I believe in, in, in terms of Pantai, it's, it's staying where it currently is. Um, there may be a need to move or reposition the stone wall. Uh, similarly, with the next property, we're actually going to be moving on to their land to construct the bike path. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm really struggling with in this process that folks are energized about is where is the harm that is being done to these residents? Other than the nuisance of the construction while it's going on. I, I, if there's harm to be had, I, I, I don't understand that. Because if there's harm, we need to address that. But I don't see what the harm is here. Other than people's feelings about something that they think is this big monster that doesn't exist. I'm trying to understand the harm. We have to reach out to the community and find out what is the harm that you are feeling or expecting. Someone tell me if I'm, not, I'm missing hey, something here. Hold on, Mary Jo. Our friend? So, along those same lines, <clears throat> these houses, uh, I'm going to go back to the temporary easements. These houses already have electrical service, correct? Correct. So there's already an electrical easement. There's a lot if it's above ground. Yeah. Well, if, an airspace, if we ever need to access it, I mean, there has <clears throat> to be an easement to it. If they, okay. if they ever need to get to that power line, there is an easement. Okay. So your ownership is from the ground up to the sky. I mean, mm -hmm. um, so there's already an easement, and basically all we're doing is burying that wire for him. I know that. Personally, I had asked uh, Verizon to bury their wires that would go into my house, and I'm much happier with it buried. <laughs> it's, it certainly looks yep. a lot nicer. Um, I think when it comes to the permanent easements, um, I think that's a different story, and I think that just requires a little more, or a lot more community engagement, where we, we could, maybe we should eat, meet with each property owner so they understand exactly what's gonna happen on their on their property so if we need to say for Pantai if we need to move the wall a little bit I think you know a rendering showing what the final result is going to be and that, that, that could go a long way as to okay, maybe, maybe this isn't so bad I think it's it's how we're delivering this uh, mm -hmm. delivering the message I think when people get a notice in the mail saying we're you know we're, we're going to uh, take your land yeah, it's it's disturbing, um, and rightfully so. Absolutely. Yeah, I think and, 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 and and I will the, the donation as well. What's, right. The, the term "donate," I think, started this whole fear. Yeah. I really do. Other than a couple of people who have been fighting this thing since day one, but the concept of "donate," coming from Mass General Law, I get it, mm -hmm. has created a lot of this. Mary Jo, oh, we're, we're from your side. I'm also yeah. Okay. Good. Oh. yeah. I did the easements when I was in the assessor's office for the Tenneco gas lines that went through town. Now these were gas lines and they went through people's property and very, very few people got or asked for any kind of compensation. Um, I think there was one in which got a few thousand because it went across in the middle of the backyard of their property and therefore they could never put in a swimming pool, uh -huh, which they weren't planning on doing anyway. But they, because of that, they did get a monetary settlement. But for the most part, these were easements done with, uh, and they went in, and the construction went in, and the pipelines went in, and the temporary easements went back, the grass went back, and we haven't heard a thing since. Yep. And this was 25, 30 years ago. Yep. If someone's going to lose the opportunity to put a pool in their backyard because of this project, that is a harm. Right. That's, that's what I'm trying to understand. But the yeah. most they got was a few thousand dollars. Right. I mean, they right. didn't we get like that. a... Yep. We should pay yeah. it. Right. Mr. 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 Tim, are we going to be restricting anyone's future use of the land with the project? No. With the okay. temporary easement? With the temporary easement, no. How about the permanent easements? Um, Obviously, I guess Pantai would not <laughs> bring, the, bring the wall back out. Exactly, and also we know what's, what's happening with the intersection at uh, CVS, but mm -hmm. this is something that we've been discussing with yeah. the property owner for many, many yeah. years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And to your point, if I may throw the chair, that was the reason why we called for the open house sessions, 
so that the individual property owners can come out, come to the town hall one-on-one, -on -one, discuss with them. We've also sent letters saying if anybody has any questions, we'll come out to their property and do that. We have also sent letters to the property owners saying that when the appraiser comes out, they have the opportunity to have the discussion with the appraiser and can even bring their own lawyer and town officials will be there also to explain any questions that, that they may have. And we have also said that we are here at town hall. If anybody has any questions, come in. We'll sit down with you and walk you through the project. Good. Okay, quickly. Excuse me to the chairman. Um, Mr. Kamala, is there, is there any way we can put a uh, frequently asked questions or a way of, um, of uh, answering that th th a, a letter went out to many people and legislators and everything else that has some misinformation on there. Is there any way that we can, we can go out and, 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 and try and nip some of these things so that, to, to Mr. Uh, to Mr. Hurst's point, that, uh, you know, to um, uh, put, put you know, some kind of a definition to the word donate and some of these other things that, that have come out that, that can be misinterpreted to something that's, that's sinister when it absolutely isn't? We've, we've done FAQs. Uh, we can continue to answer some of these questions. Um, again, this is a large project. Right. It is not surprising that there are people who have certain feelings and sentiments about the project. It is a large project. Yep. Uh, so we, we will never take away the opportunity for people to express negative feelings towards such a large project. But as we get closer to putting a shovel in the ground, I think we're seven or eight months away from that now, at least yeah. technically. Um, it's, we, we have to address these things so people understand that the project is moving forward. And the, the notion that it's a financial disaster for the town, that is not accurate at all. This is a very inexpensive investment for the community to be getting uh, through a lot of help from the state and the federal government. So. Yeah, it's all of our tax dollars in play, but it's people's tax dollars from California in play, too. So we're, this is a good opportunity for the town, and, you know, the people that are going to be harmed, we need to know what that true harm is, and we'll try to address that, because I don't want to see anybody get harmed. But no one's pointed out the harm yet, because I think there's mis a misunderstanding about what's going to happen with these temporary uses. Yep. Agreed. Good. Um, <coughs> anything else? Good. All right. So it's after 6:20. Is uh, it's after 6:30? Is the uh, Belladora Corp. DBA the Vin Bin? Are they here? Come on up. Good evening. So the select board has invited the Vin Bin to review an alleged violation on Wednesday, June 5, 2019, regarding delivery of an alcoholic beverage to a person under the age of 21. Um, just give me one second here. Uh, Mr. Kamalo. Yes, um, good evening. This issue is coming before the board tonight because the board received a memo from the APCC regarding uh, a violation that occurred on your property. Uh, I want to be clear upfront that the, the board has a very strong position regarding alcohol licenses and the obligations of the alcohol license holders uh, to the town, to the community, and to your business. Uh, secondly, the board does understand that this issue is rightfully before the ABCC, and the board tonight has no intention of issuing a penalty, but rather the board really wants to hear directly from you what happened. Sure. Uh, my name is Rick Lombardi. I'm the owner of the Bin Bin. I have with me tonight the manager of the Hopkinton store, Aaron Acadian, and the head of our uh, human resources, Christina Lombardi. Uh, <coughs> we are uh, very disappointed <coughs> by the events of June. Um, I was informed uh, that evening that, that the compliance, that we failed the compliance check that evening. Uh, I looked on our cameras and I saw uh, exactly the incident that happened. Um, our uh, staff are all trained, they're all TIPS certified. Uh, they all receive um, extensive training. Uh, we, are, uh, we, uh, we require that anyone who works for us 
uh, attends tips training, uh, live tips training, not any online or any other types of training. Um, we take this very seriously. We have four locations. We've been in business 15 years. Uh, this does not happen to us. Uh, we don't consider ourselves the type of stores where uh, underage drinkers target. Um, so it was, uh, it was sort of shocking and stunning to us. Uh, looking over the, the videotape, uh, what I did notice was that the uh, employee who served the, uh, the agent uh, is not typically or was not typically someone who works on our register. She actually works in our cheese department. But at the time of the incident, it was fairly busy. And to, in order to help out the, the store, she jumped in. And of course, <coughs> at that point, the agent approached her and uh, purchased uh, looked like a six pack of beer. Um, the person who rang up the agent is TIP certified. Um, but again, she is not uh, commonly used to running the register. Um, and I, I, I think she only works one day a week. And during the time of her employment, during that one time, one shift a week, she really re runs the register. So it's very uncommon for her to actually see the customers. Um, sadly, we had to release her that evening uh, because we take this very seriously. She. She was a fairly good employee, and we, and we, we did appreciate her work, but uh, we have a, a zero tolerance. Anyone who breaks any alcohol violation is immediately terminated. And as I say, we've been in business 15 years. We've never had an uh, <coughs> issue with any license, any liquor license violation. Uh, the fact that we've only had to do this once in 15 years, I think says a lot about our reputation in the business. Thank you. I will open it up to the board for any questions or comments. Mr. Hurt? Were you the gentleman that came in when you first moved to Hopkinton? Um, yes. Yeah, I, I was. Um, well, I live in Marlboro, uh, but uh, yes, I'm the, I'm the one who's been here since we opened up, um, I believe, six years ago. Yeah, because I was on the board at the time when we issued the first license. And I know we had the uh, very clear and direct conversation that Mr. Kamala pointed to, mentioned a few minutes ago, that we like you kind of have that zero tolerance kind of we have that zero tolerance policy as well so while it's unfortunate that the employee was terminated um you know in your industry i assume that that's something that has to be done if you want to maintain strict controls over your business operations um that's all for now okay Mary jo? no i really don't sure. i don't know there was a there was a very good uh, explanation description of what happened thank you very much i'm also satisfied so I appreciate that you came before us, not with legal counsel telling you what to say, what not to say, that you came, you took accountability, you took responsibility, and like Mr. Hurst said, the, the reaction is that you had to terminate your employee, which is never fun, but I agree with you that it's probably necessary. So, um, you know, I, uh, I'm satisfied with, uh, you know, it's an unfortunate event, and our police are great at what they do, and uh, it's a, an eye-opening event, and thank goodness it was, you were selling it to uh, an undercover representative rather than a, a kid going to an after football party. So, uh, lesson learned, and um, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, Mr. Hur? So Mr. Kamal, going forward, um, we typically would have Chief Lee come in and <coughs> describe the event as well and so forth. Is that a pending situation, or was this, this evening kind of the precursor to that or perhaps the replacement for that discussion? Um, this is a different situation. The sting operation was conducted by the state. Oh. Yeah, it oh, was yeah. not, yes, it was not conducted by our <coughs> team and therefore that whole process is under the control of the APCC. However, because we were notified of the incident, we felt it was proper and appropriate for the board to hear directly from the license holder what happened. And then with it being in the state sting operation and not the local, um, does the ABC still reserve the right to implement or institute any kind of uh, policy or reprimand as a result? I, I, yes, the answer to your question is yes. And in fact, through the chair, I have a question. Um, have you gone before the ABCC for the hearing yet? Uh, no, in no. fact, until um, you mentioned it, we thought this was the Hopkinton 
uh, police department who conducted this thing. We were not um, approached by the ABCC. Mm. See, that's, so that's my concern about, you know, I don't know if we can sort of wrap this up tonight or not. Mr. Kamalo, I think we need to kind of leave this issue open until I, we find out what the ABCC does. I don't think our goal tonight is to wrap it up because we knew that it was, you know, still in process. Our goal tonight was just to come up, have an informal conversation with you, let you know once everything's determined, you know, if, if you're um, absolved of any type of, of wrongdoing, we wouldn't talk to you again about it. I mean, you know, obviously we're reiterating our feelings towards uh, underage drinking and, and the selling of alcohol to underage individuals. Um, if the state does levy um, a fine and or suspension on you, we would probably have you back. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. good. All right, thank you for coming up. Thank you, thank you for having us. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, with, you know, we had a proclamation here for uh, Boy Scout Will Dion at 610. He's not here, so I'm just going to get go ahead and read this and we can send it off to him, or should we postpone it? Um, let me check with Maria. Okay. Um, so I guess we can do future liaison reports. Huh. I mean, liaison reports. <laughs> Uh, it's a good way to describe it, actually. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mr. Nasrullah. Um, I don't know. You got nothing? <laughs> no, I've been yeah. in and out. What have you been doing? <laughs> in, and, in and out of hospitals and doctors. Yeah. Um, there was a um, uh, Chamber 2020 meeting this morning um, discussing uh, many things, including the uh, Hopkinton um, Family Day and uh, Getting people out, also the whole holiday stroll coming up in December, and many of the other uh, get-together events, but uh, nothing, nothing earth-shattering. Good, Mr. Her. Uh, I have nothing to report this time. Mary Jo. Uh, yeah, the assessors have put out the means-tested applications. They had to be back, and they've gotten a little over more than 30. Uh, and I know that we have to decide in one of our future meetings how much money that exemption is going to be for, uh, but they are moving right along and they're also moving right along with the, their regular assessments and they should be in a very timely manner doing uh, the classification hearing. Good. Okay. And we, so for me, uh, with the elementary school building committee, Marathon School, uh, we're probably one meeting away from signing off and having that be completed. Um, and uh, we've met a few times with open space, so that's going pretty good. Good. Uh, future agenda items? Uh, to the chair, I'd like to uh, uh, talk about uh, parking throughout through the... Um, Downtown? To the big dig process. Okay. You know, if there's uh, something we can do, if there are any other, any other parcels who might be able to that They say they were coming. Okay. Our friend? You know, I think um, this, uh, you know, the speakers today about the Main Street Quarter project, um, I, I think it would probably make sense. I think Brian had suggested it earlier, uh, previously, that we have like a regular update every time. Yep. Every time. And uh, I'd like to get that on the agenda moving forward as to, as to where we are and Okay. Any complaints received and what the yep. resolution is possible. Good. I agree. Mary Jo? Okay. Well, this has nothing to do with that, but before the planning board gets here, and I know we're going to be talking about a new member for the planning board, but also when I was reading these, the, um, the host agreement uh, changes, those also include off site housing that we, we had this conversation at the last meeting with um, Mastriani. The, yeah, with Mastriani's uh, girl yep. or woman. Person. <laughs> I say we go by that. people. Represented. A people, we person, know, uh, yes. Well, has gone by the last election. Yeah, and now it's, now it's coming up with legacy farms <laughs> in, in okay. the host agreement. And perhaps when the planning board gets here, we can, if you have any questions about how that's working or what we're doing with that. Uh, okay. 
we should probably include them, ask them about it too. Because okay. I'm looking at these figures in, in Mastriani, I mean, $260,000 to buy a three bedroom home for low income housing. Where are we going to find it in Hopkinton now? It, it, you know, it's, yep. it's without building it themselves or, or have, make sure what kind of condition it's going to be when they turn it over to yep. these low income people. Uh, I, there's just, I have some questions and I don't know if you guys do too, but. Okay. Yep. Put that on a future agenda. Well, it, <coughs> it is here. I mean, tonight it's going to be part of the, the planning board's coming in for that, but this affordable housing and the yep. senior housing is in the okay. Osmond change for tonight. Okay. So. Yep, we can yes. talk about that. Um, but that's not part of the joint meeting, is it? No, it no, isn't. That's no, no, why. That, so but if, if we're going to have it with the joint meeting, here. that would be a, another meeting. The joint meeting is to make the right. appointment. Right. Appointment, that's yeah. It. Um, so we still have a few minutes to kill. So Norman, I think we can do this board and committee appointments. We're just we're putting one person in for one opening. So yeah. Um, so the select board will make appointments to several boards and committees for various terms, and will consider appointing certain officials. Um, board and committee appointments. So number one, Trail Coordination and Management Committee, Cindy Estheimer, recommended by Parks and Rec, replacing Dan Terry. Term expiring 6:30 of 20. Um, all in favor of placing her? Motion to approve. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Amen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. CPC Ken Wisemantle at large to a term expiring 6:30 of 22. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions. It carries. Open Space Preservation Commission Conservation Commission Rep. Ed Harrow to a term to expire 11 17 2020. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Those carry. Um, so, if there's anyone here for the parade permit for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, the, uh, the KFC 60th anniversary dinner, oh, the House of Dance, uh, we have already seen those and they have been approved. So you're all set. You're all set. We are what you call in the industry a well-oiled machine. So now what do you want to do? Can we go back to the future agenda items? Anything? Would that be appropriate? That would be fine by me. You have 30 minutes. <laughs> I think I'm going to need about 40. Would that be enough? That's not usually enough time for me. Mr. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Caballo, on the future agenda items, and, and kind of maybe just adding on to what the Mr. Nasrullah was saying, and what I was saying earlier, perhaps the board needs to invite those folks that feel they're being harmed by the corridor project to come before the board formally. I know we've had three town meeting votes to date, is that correct? And town meeting, which is the ultimate governing body in Hopkinton, Massachusetts, has passed those three votes do the corridor project in various reasons why we had the votes, right? Um, and this board has supported getting those articles on town meeting and this board has made other decisions along the way, et cetera. And we're charged with implementing town meeting votes which have said we're gonna build a corridor project. But obviously folks are still feeling not good about it, some, not all. 17,500 people live in town. I know of about 100 that are frustrated. But 17,000, 400 are saying, when's this gonna be done? And it's gonna be a nightmare when we're getting it done, but it's, when's it gonna be done? So but we, I think we need to give people an opportunity. So Mr. Chair, I would suggest as a formal agenda item, we invite anyone that feels this project is harming them to present the harm. Okay. Not to come in and yell about the fact that they don't wanna put up with traffic for two years, because we already know that. And not to present the fact that, you know, it's gonna be dusty and all those kinds of things. I'm looking for specific harm yes. from property owners that have easement questions in front of them. So to add on that, I like that idea. I didn't feel great having to shut Jackie off a couple of weeks ago at two minutes when she had stacks well, and stacks of stuff. That's why we give some stuff. more time. We make an right. agenda. So if they want to come in and get on the agenda, tell us what their point is to discuss so we can come in somewhat educated and know what they're talking about. It's not fair to you or to Elaine or to us for people to come in and say, I have something I want to talk to, bring 
18 inches of papers. Well, that, that, but that's, that, that's, I guess I'm coming from a different angle. <laughs> I'm saying we're setting the agenda. The agenda right. item is if you're a property owner along the corridor and you feel that an easement, temporary or otherwise, is going to do you harm in some form or fashion, please come and present your harm. That's the agenda. Okay. Because I'm interested in understanding, I don't want to be out of touch. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in understanding what is, what is the problem. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be able to sift through that a little bit and see if it's truly an issue or yeah. if it's just a, they it's don't like change or they just don't want to put up with the aggravation, you know. Yeah. But it, would be, it would be nice to like, turn the waters crystal clear. Yeah. And to, to eliminate any confusion. And, I, and if after the, the explanation and the confusion, they have their, their, you know, their bones of contention, they can certainly move forward from there. But it would be nice to clear the air and to have people fully understand the, the, uh, the depth of the conversation, what we're going to be having. And when it's an agenda item, we can also have a dialogue about it. I felt right. bad that Mrs. Kelly came in tonight. She voiced her frustration and she, she, she left. Yep. And then it came up on the agenda 10 minutes later through the town manager's report. Because we can't debate or dialogue public forum. We can dialogue agenda items. Right. So I think it will give us a chance to have a dialogue. We can't have it be a free-for-all for 48 hours, but I think the public sessions that you've held to date, where you had 15, 16 people, I think, 10 respectively, that's good, but that wasn't before the town. That was at some building somewhere, right? Let's put it on camera. Let's let everybody participate. Let's let everybody see and let's truly try to understand where the harm lies and then we can hopefully address it. Good. Mr. Kamala, what do you think? Tell me um, your feelings. It's it, one reason, one of the many reasons I love my job is that uh, uh, it has many opportunities for people to be engaged, to participate and to be part of the democratic process and therefore uh, I think if the board wants to schedule such a session, I think it's, it should be appropriate. Uh, we will have to figure out how how do we identify those who are opposed. So far, we know two or three yeah, individuals. Yeah, I think that if we maybe reached out to those, at least one of those two, that one person has the ability mm. and will reach out to everyone potentially that maybe you know that's word of mouth can can uh, get things through this town pretty quick. I don't know if you've experienced that yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think just throwing this out there, but if we were to just have one public forum and, and 100 people show up with stacks 18 inches high, we're never going to be able to give everyone a fair chance to present right. their, their issue. So maybe what, what would make sense is to have an agenda item. We would invite 10, 15 of the residents, yep. you know, over the course of several meetings and give everyone a chance to voice their concern. I mean, but, but I don't think well, we have several meetings left. I mean, again, we're supposed to, we are supposed to bid this and we're supposed to put shovels in the ground the in April of 2020. Yep. That is six, seven months from now. Right. Uh, right. So I think what we have to do is we have to let it be known that the Board of Selectmen is going to add an agenda item to a regularly scheduled meeting. And for one hour, we're going to hear the concerns of the residents and try to understand the harm they are feeling with respect to the corridor project. And we have to focus on the harm. We can't focus on the emotions of it. If, right. And, and mm -hmm. frankly, we post it. And if nobody shows up, where's the harm? And if three people show up and the harm is they're frustrated, it's going to be a nightmare for 18 months, well, I agree with them. You're, they're right. Yep. But that's not a harm. That's an aggravation. I mean, there's a difference there, I guess. Maybe there is a harm in having to put up with the noise, and I'm going to have to put up with the noise, too. I'm three blocks from it. So, I mean, we're all going to have to go through some aggravation and, I guess, harm. But I'm trying to understand because, it, it, and this all goes to me, back to this concept of donate. And I think if we give people a chance to describe their frustration with the term donate, and their chance to describe their frustration with the harm they're feeling because of that request to donate their land, maybe we can solve some of these problems during that session. So, I, and, and I like, like if, if you said an hour, if, say we said an hour or, or however long we said, I like, and only two people show up to that, I like not having to cut the people off. Like, 
Jackie had, she probably could have filled our whole meeting with, with her interpretation of everything that was going on, right or wrong, but we couldn't go back and forth with her because it was public comment. Um, where, you know, if she can have a conversation, one of the things that she said she wanted to have a meeting with Mr. Kamalu with the Board of Selectmen present, that would do it. That's a meeting with Mr. Kamalu and five board of, members of the Board of Selectmen. So, um, or the select board or whatever we well, call ourselves. But, but I think that's a great example of this whole thing because if, if that individual comes in and says, well, my property is going to be harmed because of X, Y, and Z, and we look at the person and say, your property is not going to have z any easements on it, where's the harm? Right. That's what I'm trying to it's get clarifying. to. There is no harm. Yeah. Right? There's aggravation and there's nuisance. Well, we're, the 17,000 residents of Hopkinton are going to have to put up with that. Yeah. But if... If, if, that, if that resident claims harm, but there's no easements on that property, right. or the easements don't cause a harm, yep. we just gotta get that cleaned out. We gotta get yeah. that out there. I think the definition, um, when you ask a donation, I think that is a problem. I think that people, when Beth came in here tonight, she didn't mention the word temporary once. She, there's a, a whole difference between an easement and a temporary easement, and we have to make sure that people understand that their property goes back afterwards. And it's actually to have uh, a temporary easement is an insurance for these people that it will go back to the way it, way it was when they started the project. You know, uh, if you don't have the easement and something happens on your property, hey, you, we're, not re we're not responsible, you didn't take the easement. Yep. Um, you know, it, it helps in that way too. It, it, it's an insurance for these people that they will get their property back the way it was originally. Yep. Good. So the only, the only concern I have is, again, 100 people showing up and then we have to cut people off. Mm -hmm. um, with, so we've identified who the easement requests went to. So. I mean, if we were to just invite those who uh, are being affected and then, as, as Brian suggested, say, present what, wh how are you being harmed, I think we can kind of narrow the focus and, um, and stay on track and let everyone, and hear everyone out. I think um, everyone has a right to be heard. So it's just, I think it's just a logistical, like, how, how do we let everyone have that opportunity? We, I think we're gonna do, I think we'll do fine with, with, with that time. You know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, having it on the agenda, having the meeting, I think it'll be good. You know, I, it's, we, we gotta get it done, we gotta have everybody speak, but. I think, I think we can always continue it, I And I think, chair, I, right? I, 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 the, the chair can handle that one. Yep. Yeah, we'll figure we out how to best way to run it. But yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. I, any chance for the public to, to truly dialogue with us about this project, I think is healthy. Absolutely. And it sounds like the public forums, while they were productive for questions and things like that, I don't think people felt they got a chance to ask some hard questions with people who make decisions, so this will be the chance. Yep. Great. All right. Idea. Putting that to rest. So I see we have an Eagle Scout in our, uh, in our proximity. Will, yes. how are you? How are you? Come on up. Have a seat. Thank you. You're welcome. So tonight we're going to recognize Will Dion for achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. Um, would you tell us about your project? I would love to. Um, so as I began my search for the, uh, my Eagle Scout project, as I um, became a Life Scout, um, I contacted a bunch of different organizations, um, but I came across this one organization um, called the Friends of Whitehall Association. Um, and for those who are not familiar, uh, it's an organization that works to protect the, uh, the flora and fauna of the Lake Whitehall watershed. And um, I do. I live in the Whitehall watershed, so this this project sort of had um, the White Whitehall watershed sort of had a special place um, to me, um, special meaning. So I began to reach out, um, and I met with this guy named um, Mr. Peter Regan, um, who worked for the the board of the Friends of Whitehall, and together we put together research on the dangers of phosphates and other runoff, um, chemical runoff, um, from homeowners into the excuse me, into the Lake Whitehall watershed. Um, together we created some um, brochures. And I'll show you these. Um, so we made these, designed the brochures, and together with 
Uh, 30 other volunteers, mostly Boy Scouts in my troop. Um, we work together. Um, together, we work together to uh, go from door to door and discuss the contents of this pamphlet uh, with the homeowners of the uh, White Owl Watershed. And uh, me and my beneficiary, Mr. Peter Regan, um, believed that um, something like this, if you just mailed it to a homeowner, um, you know, they might just toss it out. But by talking, by having Boy Scouts um, go door to door and have a conversation with, uh, with the homeowner, we believe that we could, um, we could have a special impact and really, um, really show um, the homeowners uh, the dangers of phosphates, especially um, in the Vidal watershed. So I just kind of skimmed through it. Um, tell me why I shouldn't burn brush or leaves, because I'm a big fan of burning stuff. Yeah. Uh, why wouldn't you burn uh, <laughs> brush or leaves near the shore of a lake? Uh, do you live in the watershed? Uh, I don't feel like answering that. No, I don't. I, don't. I, live in the, I live in the center of town. No way near any of that stuff. Okay. But I'm still not opposed to burning stuff. Yeah. Um, well, burning stuff, um, burning stuff can release. Uh, well, the product was especially designed for um, the phosphates. So the burning, the burning pile, if you have the permit, um, is not as not the main focus, especially if you. Um, if you're removing like the, the, the ash and the, um, the, the waste product from that, um, it's, it's more for the, the chemical runoff that can cause, um, especially the phosphate that can cause algae blooms um, that can suffocate the oxygen in the lake, or the suffocate the, the animals and the plants in the lake. Okay. So it only applies if you get a permit, so I'm fine. <laughs> um, I like how you stood in there with him. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, that's awesome. I'm going to open up to the board for any questions. Her? Well, I think this is great. Uh, very nice pamphlet. I did just kind of scan through it myself real quick. Um, I mean, we're seeing this now in town with Lake Maspinac. Mm -hmm. The north basin of Lake Maspinac is really tough this year. We didn't do the drawdown last year or the year before, I think. Uh, and I know there's a lot of concerned citizens over there that want to kind of come in uh, before us and try to figure out how we can uh, fix that situation too. So good for you to get ahead of the curve here with this. Uh, I do see some choke going on in the very north end of Lake Whitehall, I think, towards the dam, right? In that one yeah, little corner so. yep. near the boat launch. Yeah, yep. yeah. That's yeah, always so uh, anything we can do to help prevent that from happening uh, and certainly spreading the word through your hard work mm -hmm. uh, is an excellent idea and it's been a, uh, it's a great project for the community. Uh, being an Eagle Scout is, you, you know this, you know that your friends are Eagle Scouts as well. It's really cool, and it's something that'll last with you for a lifetime. Yeah. And uh, you should be very proud of it. The community is very proud of all our Eagle Scouts, you being one of them now. And uh, we congratulate you for your hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mary Jo? I'm fascinated, and I really like this brochure, particularly where it talks about lawn care and mm -hmm. phosphates and things that you know a lot of people just don't think about. Mm. And even people that live near the lake, and, and I think that reminding people and, and bringing up the problems is an excellent idea. I think it's great. You're to be commended for it. Thank and you. congratulations to you. And congratulations to the family who pushed you to get your ego. Yeah. Mr. Catino. Well, you come from a family, your brother, your brother went through before you. And yeah. I, was, I was glad to see how you put both your business and, and your, your um, passion for, for being a scout together. Mm -hmm. You know, you do do lawn care, good lawn care, and yeah. your brother has always had a good business there too. You know, it's just great seeing it come right through a family, and, and it's a tribute to your parents for, uh, for standing behind you guys. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a, um, a spot on your resume that's, that's gonna carry you and do you good for, for the rest of your life. Um, you know, when, when, when there's that pause, where when you're doing an interview, somebody's gonna go down, they'll scroll down and see Eagle Scout. And then there's going to be a whole conversation over it, and, and, and it's really going to help you get a job in the future. So congratulations. Thank Good job. Congratulations, uh, primarily on your Eagle Scout. I think that's quite an accomplishment, and I think, uh, as everyone has said, that's going to go with you for life. But I think it's, uh, it's the lessons that you learn, uh, it's the, the motivation to go and get your Eagle Scout that, uh, that really is going to propel you through, through life. And as a personally, as a... Uh, resident in the Whitehall watershed. I love the work uh, that you're doing. I think cutting down the phosphates is, is fabulous. Um, 
I've also recently switched to using organic uh, lawn care, and I'm having far better results than anything I'd ever used previously. Uh, and an interesting thing I re recall from getting when I was at, uh, in law school, environmental law, uh, we were talking about phosphates. Mm -hmm. And I think what most people don't realize is that <laughs> all it does is create the suds and soap. It's, but you can have soap without it. So I just found that interesting. Thank you. Good. Will, thank you very much. Congratulations. Good job, Will. Thank yep. you very much. Yep. And uh, so I have a proclamation here. I'm going to read it. Uh, Town of Hopkinton, the Hopkinton Select Board hereby recognize Eagle Scout Will Dion, Troop Number One, Hopkinton Mass, Boy Scouts of America. Therefore, the Select Board of the Town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, join Will's family and friends in recognition of his achievement in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout, signed under our hand and seal of this 10th day of September, 2019. So uh, congratulations. So it looks like we have approximately 12 minutes before the planning board joins us. Um, so just to uh, take a moment, uh, this Saturday is family day. Um, and we will, uh, I don't know if every, everybody knows, um, with the Triple E, no, with the Triple E uh, stuff going on, the, the town has canceled the fireworks uh, for the good of the public safety. Um, I wholeheartedly endorse that. We didn't lose any type of money for it. Not that you can put price on uh, people's health, but the fireworks company did not uh, keep our deposit. And um, so we are going to uh, move it forward to next year, I would assume, assuming everything goes well. But we still have all the but other activities. Yeah, we still got the activities. So Lumberjack show. Come on, yeah, yeah. Lumberjack dunk booth, which I always go in the booth before Mr. Catino. Mr. Catino. I'd like to leave the water a little warmer for him. Um, <laughs> and uh, one other thing I was going to talk about. With Poly Arts also. Poly Arts. It's yep. a great, it, it just it's makes good. a great day and go from one to the it's other and weekend. enjoy the whole town. And what else did I have? I know what you wanted to say, there's going to be a second session of public comment available now. You are not recognized. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Che, if I may. You may. Uh, to attendees, please. If you're parked behind pizza, uh, Bill's Pizza, yes. move your car. Yeah, so we've... Uh, the only, yeah, the parking spaces that are available for town hall use are the ones that are facing this way. Along the, pla yes. Watch my hand, yes. The back of the town hall, yeah. where you have the handicap access. I'm like up against the woods. No. That's okay. No, That's no, 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 no. Yes, which woods? Is it after the shed? If it's after the shed going the, to the dumpster, that's bills. Yes. And also, um, this will be the last time I say it. If anyone's here for the CF Cycle for Life, uh, the dance performance reception at the HCA, and, uh, and the KFC, we have already approved those agenda items and we are free to go. So 
We have a joint meeting of the planning board set for about nine minutes. So why don't, uh, I think we can probably start convening and we won't start the meeting till, uh, till the time of uh, 720, but if we wanna start putting everything together and getting our seating going and going from there, I think we'd welcome that so we can start on the, uh, Mr. Durso, nice to see you. Um, just a comment. I went to the um, Jimmy Fund event at Western Nurseries, which was a big success last oh, Saturday. Good. What a beautiful day. Awesome. Pete Mazet and family run a pretty solid, pretty solid thing. Uh, who are we missing for you guys? Amy and Mary yeah. and Deb. And they're all planning on coming? So I didn't double check. Okay. Let's try to find parking. Yes, I'm going to do the on the street. I'm just saying that. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chair, I actually was serious about asking for just two minutes of public comment. Is that something that can be done? I know the policy is to be here at I mean, 7 o'clock or whatever. We only did an hour ago. But yeah, go ahead. Um, two minutes. Okay, thank you. Because we have the time, right? Yeah. So um, I know you guys have issues with the downtown corridor project at our higher priority, but I just wanted to make one comment about the um, overhead wires. Mm -hmm. So I know that the, the project only goes up to the police department, I believe, but I did notice that there's two poles on the other side, <coughs> right in front of 77 Main Street, I believe, in front of the old town hall. That seems like that would be a very quick win to put those underground to get to the other side. So, I mean, if we're going to be tearing up the road and repaving the road, I'd like to um, maybe pass that on to you guys to consider that. Okay. We Thank can't you. we can't comment back and forth to yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's fine. Just wanted to okay. make a okay. comment. Thank you. So how's everyone with the planning board today? Awesome. Good? Mm -hmm. Good. Planning away? Planning away. Planning any vacations? <laughs> I'm going to uh, France. So I'm studying France. <laughs> yeah, I'll think of you often. <laughs> yes. Just like on the island, actually. I have a comment. Uh, I want to thank the board's select board on meeting with us on a, such a convenient time for both boards. Um, in the past, it's been sometimes difficult to coordinate over 12, 13, 14 people sometimes to uh, get the right number of people. So thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for showing up too. So, Mr. Kamal, is there anything we can do in the six minutes before this opens to kind of explain anything or get this underway so we can... We can stretch. And stretch? Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I think we're done with everything else. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for being so efficient. Do we have at least one more person coming? I don't think we're ever going to criticize your efficiency. I was just thinking of grabbing chairs, and then we could fit one or two. Right there. You need a chair for painting, right? Yeah, well, there's three chairs. You can pull those bench chairs up, and then. Uh, we may have to. We may have to find a way to have. Uh, yeah, have uh, candidates. The applicant will have to have a seat, so maybe we'll grab one more seat. Too. Standard. Yeah. Uh, or they can stand. Um. Yeah. Uh, excuse me for just a second. Uh, it's a new fashion. 
MMA. Mountain biking accident. Oh, it was mountain biking. I thought you said MMA. Oh, oh, oh mountain biking. That's why it's plastic now. Last time we met at the library. It's nice and cool. Is it? I liked it a lot more than I thought it would. How was the room? Like two size wise? It was the right size. It was maybe third more bigger than this space. And uh, I could uh, situate better because like, we needed the screen. We had access to the screen last night. We had three minutes. Oh, okay. And it was like nice and cold. Everyone's sleeping like, oh, it's too cold. Right now I'm starting to feel the heat. Well, during the summer, there's some nights it was brutal, especially as it gets later. Mm. It's like, I've had a long day and it's hot and it's, it's tough to stay focused on. I guess the hotter and are there's rain showers. Where'd you have to go? Tomorrow. Where do you work? I work for a company called Tybersoft in Westboro. Oh. It's a software company. Yeah, is it Italian? <laughs> no, it's uh, Tiber. Tiber. Yeah. Uh, it's named after a river. Tiber, Tiber River. Mm -hmm. Major river, river in Rome. No, it's, I, don't know, I don't know why it's, it's not Italian, nothing to do with it. <laughs> Makes data, data analytics software. I think we have to wait for 20 hours, right? Yeah. Which is only one minute. Hi, Grace. Her friend. Her friend. Her friend. Her friend. Her friend. Her they were 11 minutes ahead of schedule. All right, so uh, welcome to the joint meeting of the uh, select board and the planning board. Um, uh, Madam Chair, we are in session already. Would you like to call your board to session? Sure. I'll uh, have a to open up the session. So moved. I will be serving as chair tonight um, for this meeting. So what we're doing is we are filling the vacancy for the, uh, the residual portion of the one-year uh, planning board. Um, and that was vacated when one of your members took a job that potentially left him in conflict. So, um, so we have, from what I understand, four applicants for the position. Uh, just give me a second. Um, these people. Uh, I know that we have. There we are. So we have Jane Moran, Mary Arnott, Mike McNamara, and Sm Smriti Chudari. I'm sure that I did not get that name right, but I gave it my all. I think it's Chaudhry. Who oh, said? Chaudhry. Chaudhry. Thank you. Um, do we have all the applicants here? Okay. So why don't we start by how I read them off. Uh, why don't you take a second, come on up, take a minute, introduce yourself, tell us a little about yourself, why you want the job, and then we will um, we'll go from there. So first, Jane Moran. Good evening. Oh. You got the hot seat for <laughs> Well, thank you all for inviting me here tonight. Uh, let me start off by telling you a little bit about myself, although I know a lot of you who, um, might not know <laughs> all about me. So about 40 years ago, I moved to Hopkinton and started volunteering right away. First it was PTA, then the Girl Scouts, then 4-H. I think one of the highlights of my volunteering was with the Boy Scouts, though, because the first year that they allowed women to be scoutmasters, I volunteered, and I stayed there. I loved it so much for the next 10 to 12 years. Besides having the great privilege of guiding and mentoring these young boys through to um, young manhood, I think the highlight, though, was 
helped mentoring over 25 boys to their Eagle rank. So that was quite an uh, accomplishment for our troop. It was Troop 1 in Hopkinton, by the way. This <laughs> one just went through a few minutes ago. At the same, about the same parallel time, I was also an explorer, law enforcement explorer post advisor. And this was also very interesting, volunteering for this position, because I um, mentored and led um, boys and girls ages 14 to 21. Now, if you don't think that was a challenge, <laughs> it was very interesting. But we did so well that we qualified to compete nationally. And we traveled all over the country. Um, through this program. And uh, what's heartwarming to me even today is I look around to the Metro West area and even in Hopkinton and a few of the surrounding towns and I see my then cadets, now young men and women, who are now in various fields of law enforcement. They're police officers, they're parole officers, they're court officers. A couple attorneys in there and there's even one CIA agent. So this is really cool. From there, I jumped in with both feet into the Legacy Farms because that was happening about the same time I was leading that other volunteer group. From that experience, I became a very active, participating citizen. I guess that's the best way to explain it. I was at uh, most of the planning board meetings, <laughs> a lot of the ZAC meetings, CONCOM meetings, and at the t then at the time, Board of Selectmen meetings, um, educating myself. I had a good knowledge of municipal government, but I needed to, um, and wanted to, desired to find out about the workings of the special <coughs> government. I think from, and so then after the zoning board passed, then came the Osmode writing and um, the host community agreement, and I stay involved. I really found that um, I'd met a lot of rich friends, um, not rich, rich, but very um, valuable friends. We, we learned a lot, and we worked hard together throughout that whole process. In about 2014, the, board of Sel the uh, select board uh, then uh, started the Upper Charles Trail Committee. I thought that would be a good fit for me, because not only do I love the out of doors, but by this time, I had a good knowledge of how the various governments, uh, town um, committees and boards worked. So I thought that I could uh, kick this, jump speed the process and get the, get the committee up and running. So we've been at that for um, quite a few years and we are beginning to make some really significant progress. I think there are two significant things I'd like to mention from um, the uh, experiences with the Upper Charles Trail. First is that um, um, we realized quickly that <coughs> there is, um, the Upper Charles Trail is kind of locked into East Hopkinton, but we were getting requests from all over town of the needs and the desires and um, uh, the um, desire to have contiguity and continuity throughout all of the neighborhoods. There's a strong, desire to have uh, trails on the other side of 495 and Woodville and to be able to connect uh, Whitehall with, uh, <laughs> with uh, Cameron Woods, that type of thing. This is something that a trails committee could do. So our, I led the ch our charge to, um, and our committee visited with Parks and Rec, the Trails Club, Open Space, um, Planning Board, I think we even went to Planning Board, got everybody's input, put together a document and submitted it to the Board of Selectmen. To the Board of Selectmen's uh, credit, they, start, they authorized this last year and this committee is now up and running and they're doing a, a fantastic job. There's one other thing I wanted to mention about that, but it, it may come to me, it may not. But, um, I think there's two things that I can bring to the planning board. Uh, number one is that um, I have a good, I feel like I have a good foundation in the, the metrics and how the planning board operates and how it works. So I feel I could get up to speed and running fairly quickly. Uh, that doesn't mean that I don't have a lot to learn. I know I have a lot to learn, but um, the basics are there and I'm very interested in all aspects of planning. The second piece of it is, and this is not a criticism, it's an observation. I noticed that with all of the voluminous amounts of paperwork that you folks have to um, get through every week and every other week, 
that sometimes there's lost opportunities to really get down to the nitty gritty about trails. There's no really good way for you to know, unless you have some background knowledge, that the plot that you're looking at with the developer may have a trail a couple of houses away. Or there may be an opportunity, if we work with, in, with this developer, that we can come somehow um, work something out. And I think you saw that last night. You know, that was months of um, talking and walking and um, different site plans and all that kind of stuff. So with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I know you have a busy night here, and I don't know if you folks might have any questions of me before I depart. We'll ask questions when we're done. This okay. Is more, strictly an in, in introduction. Thank you. All right, Mary Anna. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you to the select board and the town management and the planning board for joining, uh, for having this joint meeting. Um, I think that you have four very high caliber candidates before you tonight, and so you can't go wrong, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and why I think I'm the best one for the job at this time. Um, I have um, attended many of the planning board meetings as well and I'm familiar with how they work. And I've even started reading all of the 600 plus pages, I think, that um, John, the principal planner, uh, provided for me and I've gone through it. A lot of detail, uh, but through my experience, I do pay attention to detail. Sometimes the devil and the success is in the details. And as a technical former technical services manager at IBM, where I worked for 32 years, um, that was one of the important things that you had to pay attention to was the detail. I was also an end user support services manager, and you have to know how to please your customer and your company. And in this case, it would be the town and the people of the town, but also be able to have win-win situations in what you negotiate with the folks that come before the town uh, with their plans. I could go on about some additional things, and I will just highlight a couple of them uh, from my previous experience, and that um, it is very involved in marketing as a manager, as an instructor, as a salesperson myself. I learned how to negotiate. I learned how to make everyone in the room feel that um, we were all in it together, and it's a win-win situation. Um, but I also was very um, proud of how I conducted marketing so that I, know, I knew how to get the um, solution that the company wanted. One reason I think that I, um, above that, that I think I would be the best candidate is I have noticed at times there are meetings where people can't attend. Um, and planning board has had to postpone meetings or continue articles um, or things that they were considering. I've looked at the schedule from now until March that has been posted, and there's only one meeting that I have a conflict with. So my commitment is that uh, I don't have any other obligations uh, or commitments that would get in the way of my being a full and complete and prepared board member. <coughs> So I'd like to point that out as well. Uh, the other thing is, is that I have no allegiance to any organization that would um, be in conflict with what my responsibilities would be. I don't have any allegiance to developers or to real estate or um, things that could be considered a conflict of interest. Um, so I can offer very independently, well thought through opinions um, consider the documentation and uh, be on, on board with the meetings and be prepared. I'd also like to um, point out that um, it does take a person who's willing to consider all opinions. Um, you get feed, input and feedback from the community as all of the ward members here know that I attend the planning board meetings and I let my opinions be known. But at, as a planning board member, I would look to be very objective, very professional, and very thoughtful in um, going through all the documentation and preparing questions and coming up with things that should be asked about whatever is being proposed in front of them. 
So I've been in my community for a long time. I'm currently doing other volunteer work, but I've looked at it. There's no way that there would be anything in conflict, um, and there's no way that what I'm doing at the Senior Center, the Historical Society, uh, HCAM, or for the town um, once in a while as a, an election worker, none of that would interfere with my planning board responsibilities or vice versa, I believe. So I hope that when you consider uh, my resume, my experience, and what I've told you here today, that you will select me as your candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We're going to hold off on the applause on that. Uh, Mike McNamara. How are you, Mike? Good. Hi, everyone. Mike McNamara. I'll keep this short. So I, I ran back in May three-year term, and I lost to this guy. <laughs> but uh, I should have bought signs. My wife kept saying that. <laughs> But so anyways, like I said, you know, I obviously I had interest back in May and so just uh, threw my name in the hat when I saw it was a one year term. I figured that'd be perfect because try it out for a year and if it goes well, can run again. If not, I just, just step away. But you know, I've been involved in different town activities. Some of you know I was with the library trustees for nine years and when my kids were younger, Hoppington Youth Sports, I was coached them and involved with St. John's Church here in, here in town. Well, that's it. So hopefully we'll get your vote. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Smriti. I'll save you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and both boards um, for inviting all the candidates today to hear about our background and what kind of insight we can provide. Um, I recently just moved into Legacy Farms, so I have the unique, I guess, background of how it is living in the community, but also the background of a developer. I am a commercial real estate attorney by trade. Um, I work in Boston. Recently moved from Ashland, so we have a serious apartments, which were similar to Legacy Farms, um, how developers are encroaching and trying to get us closer to our 10% that all the municipalities need to hit for affordable housing. Um, there are different concerns in Hopkinton, obviously, um, with condominiums mixed in with apartments. Ashland was just apartments. Um, we had different hurdles, but it would be interesting um, to get on the board for Hopkinton and just continue um, what I had left in Ashland. I was on the zoning board for Ashland for three years. Um, I absolutely loved my time on the zoning board. I'm looking to transition into the planning board just to get some more experience on subdivisions, ANRs, um, and it is a whole different ballgame than the ZBA. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. So do any board members um, have questions for any of the applicants? We may have already heard everything we need to. Additional follow-up questions may not be necessary. But if anyone has any questions that have come to mind, they want to ask a question of the applicant, and we've all had their resumes, we've all had a chance to review everything. Um, uh, this would be the time to ask. Mr. Chair, if I may? You may. We also have copies of the runoff voting procedure. I shared this previously with the planning board. If any of you are interested, here are the copies. If I may, um, I just want to take a few minutes to thank all of the applicants. We all know that there's one seat and four very um, qualified applicants, and this is a very happy, fortunate position for us to be in. The, the, the downside, of course, is that only one person gets picked. Um, I would like to encourage all of the applicants that um, may not find their seat on the planning board for this one year uh, term to look at other volunteer opportunities in town because there's a lot of wonderful opportunities out there and we want people to uh, to jump in and, and participate. Um, so I really appreciate all of the applicants, the interest, and this town has um, for a long time, as long as I've been here, benefited from a number, of, a, a voluminous number of volunteer hours and we couldn't do it without willing participants and we appreciate everybody. Yep, I feel the exact same way. Thank you, Muriel. Um, you know, ideally, it's easy. It's an easy job for us when this something like this comes up and there's one qualified applicant for one seat, and we don't have to tell anybody that they're not going to be able to volunteer for a year. Um, so the, the benefit is that we have four very very strong applicants. It's not going to make it an easy easy choice moving forward, but 
uh, it's, a, it's a good situation to be in. So, Mr. hearing, Mr. yes, Frank. Mr. Chair. How do I know? <coughs> um, I have a comment and then a question for the candidates. Um, when I first joined the planning board over five years ago, I replaced Mr. Catino, and Mr. Catino and myself have been on this process many, many times. Um, so it's good that we have four candidates, and I think it's hard to pick between these four candidates, which is great. It means we have good talent and interested people in our town. Um, my question for the candidates, and I think we historically always seem to ask this, is would they be willing, uh, would they be open to be running for re-election in next May's election? Very good question, Mr. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Tetstone. So, yes. So, Mary, yes. Mary, yes. Jane? Absolutely, yes. Mike? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's unanimous. Yep, yeah, unanimous. They all want it. Uh, just give me a second here. Good. So, hearing no more questions. I, yes, I, just, have, I just have one comment because uh, I believe that um, through the uh, chair of the planning board, uh, there, do we still have openings on Zach? We do not. Oh, okay. Yeah, but thank you. Oh, great. Although, if I may say, um, there are alternate, alternate. positions on that's Zach right, available. So, yeah. Um, so, yes. So there that's are, a there great are place. It's, that's it's a great place. That I, I what's my 13th year on Zach now. It's you know, and I was on there before I came to the planning board. It's a great place to learn how the system works, how the planning board works, and and different parts of the town. I urge anybody to come on. Be, come be an alternate because it's uh, it's just a great board to be on. Okay. So before I entertain a motion, I'd like to ask each of the board members to indicate which candidate they prefer the position of planning board. I will start from my left. Go counterclockwise. There's no clockwise. <laughs> Mr. Catino. Well, the only person I've ever worked with is Jane Moran. So uh, Jane, please. Okay. I'll keep a tick sheet here for. Who's choosing whom? Mr. Mr. Chair, just to be clear, so we're just doing a what now, or? We're doing a, um, just a preliminary, um, kind of a poll to see who, which candidate the, uh, each um, prefers. If one candidate's preferred by a majority of all the board members, then we'll entertain a motion to appoint that candidate, and uh, if it's, if no candidate is preferred by a majority of all the board members, but two candidates have preferred by more than members of the others, then we'll entertain a motion. So some of the process of elimination. Yeah. 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 I got you. Okay. So yeah. in the end, just for the public's uh, benefit and f my appreciation, I appreciate this process. Whoever is chosen will have a majority of the votes of the voting members of the combined boards. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess once we get what are your five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So once we get seven, if someone gets seven votes, then we'll end it. If someone gets six and six, then we'll go to maybe a second round or four, four, and four, or three, 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 and three. I've done this before. At length, my first meeting. It's great. Oh, that was your first meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. So, Mr. Kit. That was quite the barn burner. Chair. <laughs> Mr. Nasrullah. Um, I think we have uh, four excellent candidates. It's a hard choice, but being the uh, real estate attorney, I think I'd have to tip my hat to Ms. Chaudhry. Okay. Amy? Mr. McNamara. All right. Uh, I'm uh, going to use my vote, and this is hard for me because I know all of the candidates, but Jane Moran has had uh, a lot of experience. And one thing she didn't say, um, which is fascinating to me, is that she has served as a police officer and a police chief in a, a neighboring town, and that is also a very valuable um, add to the planning board, in my opinion. Okay, so you chose Jane Moran? Yep. Mr. Trendle? Um, again, four great candidates. My vote goes to Jane Moran. I think she brings stability and experience, um, which is, I think, of great value to us right now. Okay. Mr. Paul? Mr. Chardery? Mr. Benson? Mary uh, Mariano. Right. Um, this first round, my vote goes to uh, Mike McNamara, because he has run before. The people have supported him. Some people have supported him. And I believe the people that voted for him last year uh, deserve a chance to see what he can do for the next upcoming year. And I think a person who runs for an office uh, shows an effort, 
that um, should be respected uh, in, in the democratic process. Uh, so this first round, my vote is for Mike McNamara. Okay. The others are all great candidates, too. Agreed. Ms. Choudhury. There you go. Well, I have always felt that uh, someone who stands for election uh, should have a kind of a priority, and Mike did stand for election. We all know how difficult that is to do out in the public and put yourself forward. And this is now the second time that he's come forward for this position, and I think I have to give a nod to Mike. Okay. Mr. Hurt? Obviously a difficult process for everybody. Wicked. Love uh, everybody. But at this point, I'd say Jane Moran. Okay. I feel the same way, so I will go with Jane Moran as well. So that gives us five for Jane Moran, one for Ms. Arno, three for Mr. McNamara, and three for Ms. Chowdhury. Um, Something that didn't fall into the memo. Two, two <laughs> second place people. Yeah, well, we didn't get seven, so we got to go to a second. So, so now we're down to three, right? All right. So, Mary, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, tough decision by all, but uh, thank you. And, and uh, I know that you're not going anywhere. You're going to still stay in town and still volunteer. So, so I guess, uh, so Mr. Kamala, Sure. What do we do here? Do we, do we have them come up and say something else? Do we have any other questions for anyone or we just, just do another, another Just do another round of votes. Yes. So let's, sure. let's go the other way. May I ask a question of the three remaining candidates? Sure. Um, I'm curious if each of them can comment on what they think is the biggest issue facing uh, the Hopkinson Planning Board um, over the next seven months. Um, Ms. Moran. Most likely growth. Uh, <laughs> Mr. McNamara. And Ms. Chowdhury. Um, yeah, legacy farms is a quintessential example because we have young families coming in, so I would say growth, development, and um, school. All right. <laughs> Going on to round two. That separated them. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we're going to go this way now, starting with Mr. Hur. Jane Moran. Mary Jo. And I will go with Jane Moran. Okay. Deb? Oh, Mary. Mary. Sorry, Mary. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'll stick with Ms. Chowdhury. Chowdhury. Okay. Frank? Um, wow. I can't skip you. <laughs> they all certainly have their benefits and their strengths. I'm going to stick with Mike McNamara. Okay. When I was first appointed, uh, I was the only Democrat in a board full of Republicans. And I think one of the major things was that I had run for the office before and I had lost. And um, I think that was, uh, I'd be a hypocrite not to vote for him. So. Sure. Okay. Rob? Ms. Chetvery. Okay. Um, Ms. Chetvery, again, I, I believe. Um, just from the short time that I've heard of her, she has, a, you know, I knew she had experience, and I, it sounds like she would be very helpful for the town. Okay. Jane Moran. Jane. Ms. Chowdhury. Ms. Chowdhury. Jane. And Jane. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, to five to one. It's so, oh. you know what I one, two, three, four, five, six for Jane. Yeah. One for Mr. McNamara. One, two, three, four, five for Ms. Chowdhury. Right? Okay. I have written down wrong. I thought it was five, five, and one. But okay. it's three. It's twelve. We have twelve here. Yeah, two. Six, five, and one. All right. To McNamara, thank you. All right. Round three. It's not over there. Let's try something different. Mr. Catino. You started with me in a minute. <laughs> All right, let's start with, um, let's start with Frank. One word. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry if I could, as your oh, yes. designated yes. Uh, parliamentarian, yep. I need to open that public hearing for Greyhound and then we'll continue. All right. One second. Excuse me for just a moment, if you would. 
Scatino. Uh, one second. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to open the public hearing to for the uh, motion to suspend Greyhound Friends Kennel License. Uh, and then um, it's open to open meeting and, and, and postpone it for Okay. okay. So if we're going. Uh, are there any uh, any further discussion? Well, I guess we don't like to. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Extension's good. Okay. All right. So we're going to, the meeting is open. We're going to continue until we're done with this planning board meeting, and then we'll get to you guys, okay? Thank you. All right. Mr. Durso. Thank you. Um, I do hope that the candidates that haven't been selected tonight do uh, look for other opportunities or boards that the planning board is a parent board of. Uh, and as Claire Wright has said, that's a stepping stone to the planning board and, and uh, further responsibilities. Um, now between Jane Moran and Ruthie Shaduri, um, again, both very qualified, both have a lot of um, pluses that they would offer to the board. Uh, I would prefer, and my choice is Jane Moran, uh, based on her work that she's currently engaged with in relation to the planning board uh, and the trails committee and working with us and communicating with us about different issues. Uh, Jane Moran. Yes. Okay. I'm over explaining it. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Benson. Mr. Ted Hurry. Mr. Paul. So I, I think it's very good that we may get into the situation that we did with the last time with the planning board, where unfortunately we have an even number of members and we may have a 6-6. Six, six. So that just goes to show that there's a very valuable candidates trying out for the planning board. So I think that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Chaudhary, Chaudhary again. Gary. Jane Moran. Jane. Ms. Chaudhary. Ms. Chowdhury. Jane. 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 All right, that's seven. Ms. Chowdhury. <laughs> that's seven. seven. That's yeah, seven. We got seven. <laughs> All right, so we have seven, two, six. Seven five. Oh, I'm sorry, seven five. It's math, friendly. Really. <laughs> right. okay, math is tough. be no math to quote. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, so it looks like Jane Moran, welcome aboard. Uh, so, Mr. Yeah. Chair, I think we need to formalize that. We have to. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 We lost Mary. No, no. Mary. I'd like to. Just, I'd like to have a motion to. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to appoint um, Jane Moran to the position of planning board member to a term expiring. At the 2020 annual town election. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Second. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's why. Any further discussion? Just the only thing. Again, thank you to all the applicants to uh, put themselves forward and, and uh, taking a shot. So that's great. Uh, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Carried. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Committee, the joint yep. appointing committee. Yep. I'll entertain a motion to. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No, we're good. Okay, we're good. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, going back to our scheduled meeting, our scheduled public meeting, I'm sorry, public hearing for the revocation of the kennel license, Greyhound Friends, 167 Saddle Hill Road. Uh, I have an extensive bunch of pages of paper to read here, so bear with me. Uh, so the next matter on the board's agenda for tonight is to conduct a hearing relative to Greyhound Friends Incorporated Dog Kennel at 167 Saddle Hill Road to, assess, to assist the Board of Selectmen in making a determination whether the kennel has been maintained in a sanitary and humane manner, if records have been properly kept as required by law, and if board will suspend, if the, sorry, if the board will suspend or revoke the kennel license as requested by a citizen's petition. All town kennel licenses are issued on an annual basis with an expiration date of March 31. The last time Greyhound Friends possessed a kennel license was 2017. That license was issued in January of 2017 and suspended in February of 2017. Greyhound Friends sub subsequently applied to the town clerk for a new kennel license on June 7, 2018. Inspections were conducted on the Greyhound Friends kennel by Hopkins Police Lieutenant Joe Bennett, Hopkins Police Chief Ed Lee, 
Hopkins and Fire Prevention Officers Tom Porter and Tim Healy, Hopkins and Public Health Director Inspector Sean McAuliffe, Hopkins and Director of Municipal Inspections Chuck Cadlick. At the request of Greyhound Friends, a hearing on the license was conducted by the Select Board on 9-11-18. The Select Board recommended that the Town Clerk deny the Greyhound Friends kennel license application based on the information contained on the uh, inspection report. On June 15, 2019, Greyhound Friends applied again for kennel license. In support of its application, the organization included a letter detailing the effort that has been made to meet both state and local requirements for the operation of a dog kennel with respect to the 2018 inspection. On July 30th, 2019, Deputy Chief Bennett, along with Fire Inspector Tim Healy, Board of Health Director Sean McAuliffe, and Director of Municipal Inspection, Inspections Chuck Cadillac, conducted another inspection of the premises based on a 15-dog capacity. Greyhound Friends passed this inspection. The kennel license was issued by the Town Clerk on August 12, 2019. Once a license is issued, the Board of Selectmen may be called upon to hold a hearing to determine whether that license should be suspended or revoked. This determination must be made upon an inspection of the facility and its records and must be based on whether the kennel is being maintained in a sanitary and humane manner and whether records are properly kept as required by law. The board may do this on its, of its own volition or 25 citizens of the town of Hopkins may request such a review. In late August, a petition containing such a, re a request was received. The Hopkins bylaws containing the definitions of terms humane and sanitary. Humane, provision of proper food and water, shelter and protection from the weather, veterinary attention, needed to reduce or end suffering from a disease or injury, a sanitary environment, facilities which are of sufficient size and design as to allow the animal to stand, sit, lie down, turn around, and make other normal postural adjustments without obstruction, interference, or impediment by the presence of food, water bowls, equipment, or other animals, have an appropriate ambient temperature, and the absence of inhumane treatment. Inhumane treatment shall include willful permitting an animal to be subject to unnecessary torture, suffering, or cruelty to subject, cause, or procure an animal to be tortured or tormented, or to be cruelly killed, beaten, or mutilated, ineffective measures to prevent the infestation of animals and premises by parasites, insects, or vermin, and to be subjected to cruel and inhumane chaining or tethering at any time, which shall include filthy and dirty confinement conditions, including but not limited to number one, exposure of excessive animal waste, garbage, dirty water, noxious odors, dangerous objects that could injure or kill a dog upon contact of other or other circumstances that could cause harm to a dog's physical or emotional health. Number two, taunting, prodding, hitting, harassing, threatening, or otherwise harming a tethered or confined dog. And number three, subjecting a dog to dangerous conditions, including attacks by other animals. Sanitary conditions, which include the interior and exterior floors of all animal contact areas, which are smooth and pervious to water and are clean and sanitized as often as necessary to maintain sanitary conditions and free of animal wastes, provided that outdoor areas may have a floor or animal appropriate gravel which is maintained and cleaned on a regular schedule consistent with the maintenance of sanitary conditions and facilities which are maintained in good repair and kept clean at all times so as to protect animals from disease and injury. Additionally, section 37-7 DB of the town bylaws requires that the following information be maintained at a kennel and, ma at a kennel and made available for inspection. Number one, the name and address of the of the dog owner of each dog kept in the kennel, other than dogs belonging to the person maintaining the kennel. <coughs> number two, the name and address of persons who have purchased dogs from the kennel. Number three, staff training records and materials. Number four, all contracts for goods or services provided in connection with the kennel's operation. And number five, organizational policies relating to the animal care, intake, veterinary treatment, adoption, and euthanasia. Immediately after those opening remarks, I'll enter the inspection report dated August 7, 2019, as well as a citizen's petition into the record. Once these documents are in the record, I will ask representatives of the petitioner group to, um, <clears throat> to present whether evidence that they have made that is relevant to whether the kennel is being maintained in a sanitary and humane manner, and if records have been properly kept as required by law. The petitioner group will be limited to five minutes to make this presentation. After that, I will make I will allow representatives of Greyhound Friends five minutes to present evidence in the licensee's defense. Finally, I will allow public comment for 20 minutes. The board is keenly aware and mindful of the fact that the treatment of animals is a sensitive topic and that many feel very passionately about. That being said, I will only allow evidence and comment that addresses whether the kennel is being maintained in a sanitary and humane manner and if records have been properly kept as required by law. 
Other topics that anybody may wish to raise will be deemed out of order. Please make sure, therefore, that you make clear how your evidence and comments relate to the standards that the board will be applying this evening. Further, I will limit each public commenter to two minutes. After the 20 minute public comment is over, I will invite board members to ask questions. I will then entertain a motion to close the hearing and the board will deliberate before voting. First, I will introduce into the record Greyhound's Friends Kennel license application, the August 7, 2019 inspection report and the citizen's petition. On June 15, 2019, Terry Shepard of Greyhound Friends Incorporated submitted an application for kennel license as well as a letter documenting the organization's efforts to meet the town's kennel inspection requirement. A copy of that application and supporting letter will be entered into the record for this proceeding. On July 30, 2019, Deputy Chief Bennett, along with Fire Inspector Tim Healy, Board of Health Director Sean McAuliffe, and Director of Municipal Inspections Chuck Cadlick, conducted another inspection on the premises as detailed in an inspection report dated August 7, 2019. A copy of that inspection report will be entered into the record of this proceeding. In late August, a group of Hopkins residents petitioned the town to request the revocation of the Greyhound Friends Kennel License. A copy of that petition will be entered into the record for this proceeding. If there are representatives of the petitioners here present tonight, I invite you to come forward and present your evidence. You're limited to five minutes. Hold on, let me get my stopwatch. And you're on. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank the members of the select board as well as Norman and Elaine for allowing us the opportunity to print, uh, present our concerns. We are grateful to Deputy Chief Bennett for his inspection of the Greyhound Friends facility and we are pleased that at long last after much duress, Greyhound Friends is providing adequate space for the dogs. We recognize that due to the way the town bylaws are written, the town clerk is re required to issue a license if a facility passes an inspection. However, it is clear from Greyhound's friend's license application letter, which is the first thing I gave you, uh, June 15th, that they made several misstatements. The first, the letter states that Greyhound Friend has entirely changed its leadership since 2017. However, records from the Secretary of State and additional sources show that the current kennel manager was a board member between at least 2016 and 17 and is a longtime employee. As you can see in the attached state records, as early as 2015, the current kennel manager was notified by the Animal Welfare Problem Law Enforcement and numerous other animal welfare professionals of the many troubling animal care problems at this kennel. The current board president and compliance officer have both made written statements on their website and social media dismissing the well-documented neglect of sick and injured dogs at the kennel. In response to the state's reports of neglect and sick and injured dogs, Greyhound Friends current management states on its website, that's also there, that, it, that the care for dogs during this whole debacle was more than adequate. If they believe this, how is this ever going to change? We are providing copies of the documentation as well as the statements. Second. Greyhound Friends Kennel License states that all dogs but two were adopted upon the closure of the kennel. Yet the attached records show that they kept dogs in boarding facilities for up to five months after the kennel license was suspended. Despite the, the numerous animal uh, rescue groups that stepped up and offered to place these dogs, we believe this speaks to the lack of judgment both that the organization left these dogs in cages unnecessarily and then they misled the town about this in their kennel license application letter. A Metro West Daily uh, news article reveals that at least one of these dogs kept in boarding was sick and was adopted from the boarding facility approximately four months after the license was suspended. MDAR reports show that the Greyhound friend was aware of this illness. As you can see from the attached documents, the person who signed off on that adoption was the current Carol manager. As you may recall, the, adop the adopter drove down from uh, New Hampshire and uh, she spoke last year. 
Uh, due to these misstatements and misrepresentations in the kennel license application letter, in addition to the decades of animal welfare violations and poor decision making by this organization, we feel that the kennel license should be revoked. We'd like to share a few points. During the last kennel license hearing, Mr. Catino said, unless there is a complete change of all the people who were involved at the time, I do not see how we can move forward. And we agree with you, John. The Director of Law Enforcement for the Animal Rescue League stated during last year's hearing, I have no faith in the Greyhound Friends Board or the staff to operate or maintain a kennel license after suspension. At the very least, if you are not going to revoke their, li their license, we believe this commitment should be made by Greyhound Friends not to allow these individuals to still be involved. We believe if they were ever to get out from under the shadow of animal ne neglect, they will need to get rid of these people who stood silently by while this happened. In terms of proper record keeping, it is our understanding that if a kennel dog is in foster care, they're required to have those dogs licensed in the town where they live. There are two dogs, according to the Holliston town clerk, um, that are not licensed with the town, and those are two Greyhound Friends long-term fosters. Greyhound Friends claims that they should be relicensed because there are dogs in needs. That's like a children adoptions agency that mistreats children and then wants their license back because there are still children in need. There are more than, what? There are more than 300 approved shelters. One of the things that you really need to ask yourself is, would you put your dog in their care? And that's it. Thank you. So um, one thing that I did not say, because I was strictly reading, is when, we st when we're starting these proceedings, we're not going to have any, like last time we had it, we had a little back and forth in the audience and the, and the, and right. the sides. There'll be none of that tonight or, or we're going to shut it right down. Right. I just want to get that out in the open. So to both sides, any back and forth, not through me or one of the board members, it, the whole thing is going to be shut down. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Greyhound friends? I'm Karen Amy Rose, president of Greyhound Friends. As an organization, we have a new board ever since the kennel was originally closed in February 2017. We have achieved a new culture with emphasis on quality of care for each individual dog in our shelter. We have brought ourselves into compliance with detailed kennel bylaws and regulations, passed the town's rigorous inspection process, and regained approval from the MDAR to operate our isolation unit for importing dogs from outside the state. I joined the board of directors in October 2017, eight months after the kennel was closed and the founder's employment was severed. A year after that, I became president. Those of us who joined the organization after its closing gradually realized that while good was being done for many dogs through the shelter, other dogs' needs went unmet in the past. This is a sad fact. We are deeply sorry about the failures of Greyhound Friends past. The best of intentions are not good enough. We have put in place systems, methodologies, safeguards, and above all, professional collaboration and openness to guard against human error and blind spots in the future. We spent over a year working with MDAR, Division of Animal Health, on comprehensive new procedures, protocols, and training materials. These were reviewed and approved by MSPCA to ensure good medical care, reliable documentation, enrichment, and movement of dogs through the shelter, we set up a state-of-the-art shelter management software. We created three-level compliance review process on all activities between the operations and kennel, kennel manager, compliance officer, and board of directors for monthly reports on all kennel activities. Multiple sets of eyes will be on the treatments and enrichment received by every dog every week, their length of stay until adoption, and other metrics. We uphold the organizational values of Best Friends Animal Society, which focus on compassion, respect, openness, honesty, authenticity, and transparency. We are all accountable to each other to uphold this culture. Even more important than our compliance today is the ongoing commitment to work with professional organizations and other groups to continue evolving. We are proactively working with experts on our planning and encourage visits and review by professional authorities at any time. In the past two years, I've witnessed Teresa Shepard working tirelessly and leading other volunteers in improving the kennel facilities and processes and raising the bar on organizational culture and interactions to a high level of honesty, directness, and collaboration. Ms. Shepard has extensive institutional knowledge of the physical plant and has collaborated successfully with regulators and authorities to plan and prioritize improvements 
to accomplish the goal of re-op- reopening, but also for continuing future improvements. Ms. Shepard has a thirst for knowledge to understand and implement best practices and respect for professional and regulatory authority. We respectfully seek to realize the results of this work and execute the Greyhound Friends' mission of helping the dogs by finding them great homes and advocating for the breed we so love. My name is Terry Shepard. I have been a part of Greyhound Friends for a long time. While I've worked in all facets of the operations, I never held a management position or leadership role until 2016 when I was asked to join the board and help facilitate the much needed improvements that were being proposed within the organization. I am sorry for the things that happened before and after the kennel closing and the changes in leadership, but now we've been able to fulfill all those needed changes. When the kennel closed in 2017 until now, I have worked with the board in collaboration with authorities and outside professionals to identify every mistake, problem, infraction, analyze what went wrong, and create solutions both physically and procedurally to be able to operate correctly in the future. I resigned from the board at the end of 2018 when I accepted the future position of kennel and operations manager. The policies and procedures that have been adopted by our organization were developed under the guidance of the Mass Department of Agriculture and reviewed and approved by the MSPCA. And I will train all incoming staff and volunteers to have a full understanding of these policies and monitor all activities to ensure procedures are followed and that we maintain safe, healthy, and sanitary facility for our Greyhounds to thrive in. Over the past two and a half years, we have achieved all necessary improvements and will continue to stay abreast of all suggested best practices and align ourselves with other successful organizations and learn from them. I've already been approached by two local adoption groups looking forward to working collaboratively with Greyhound Friends and we're excited to move forward with these opportunities. I should end there. I'm out of time. You've got 18 seconds. I fully believe we are um, a needed shelter, one that Hopkinton can be proud of again, and we're ready to begin our work. Thank you. Good job, both of you, to keeping it within five minutes. <coughs> so, uh, finally, I'd like to invite public comment on the revocation, as we did last year, so we can't have one side flooded and the other side not be heard. I'm going to ask that people for Greyhound Friends, pro Greyhound Friends, uh, form a line to the to the my left. People for anti Greyhound friends go to my right. You have two minutes. That means for your groups, if you've had discussion on who's going to present and who's not going to present, you have a maximum of five people that are going to have be a chance have a, the ability to talk for two minutes at a shot. So just I don't you know just as I, I let these guys know they had thirty seconds, twenty seconds, whatever. I'm going to do the same thing to you. Once two minutes comes, that's it. All right, so we are going to go ahead and open it up to public comment on the revocation. Um, so we're going to go for a maximum of 20 minutes. And as a reminder, the board's only interested in comments related to the sanitary conditions, humane conditions, or record keeping conditions of the kennel. Please keep your comments to those three uh, topics. So if we could move forward, if there's anybody that would like to speak, um, why don't we start by. Uh, um, Okay, uh, Mr. Durso, you are on the clock. Thank you, Frank Durso, 173 Saddle Hill Road. I'm a member of the planning board and elected constable, but I'm speaking as a citizen and an abutter. Um, my bedroom window is a couple acres away from the woods. Uh, never had a problem in 20 years with the Greyhound Friends. Uh, noise, cleanliness, smell, anything like that. Uh, I visited uh, these fine people. Uh, I appreciate the good work they're doing. Uh, they're all coming a lot. I understand the frustrations brought forward by the 18 people. Um, and their opinion uh, is what brought us here today. But uh, everything I've read about and seen with my own eyes indicates that they're following all the rules that they need to follow um, and that they're keeping up their the property, even though they, they have nothing going on with pets there uh, for the past two, three years. And I think they're good group and they're going to do well moving forward in the future. I've been very impressed meeting with them and I would like to see them be able to go forward with the good work that they do. Thank you Mr. Durso. So for just a um, comment on record keeping, according to my clock I started this at 2009 hours. This public comment will over at 2029 hours. Okay. 
Moving forward. I had a question just regarding the veterinarian. They choose to work with, they're gonna have a veterinarian who they're gonna use? Uh, are we, um, is that in the, kind of in, into the content? Why, why don't you note that question and then we'll get you a question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're back on the clock. You're off the clock. There you go. Okay, hold on, vet. All right, over the side. Good evening, my name is Dale Warren. I'm from Eastburg, Connecticut. My wife and I started adopting dogs at Greyhound Friends in 2008 uh, after our first adoption. The kennel has now passed all inspections, state and local. The kennel's implemented procedural changes, documentation, electronic kennel management system, the kennels are very large and spacious, and the proposed number of dogs has been set to a, management, a manageable level. Greyhound Friends has maintained an income stream for the last two years and met their fundraising goals. I ask that you support the findings of both lo local and state inspections and maintain the kennel license for Greyhound Friends. And yes, I will put my dog in that kennel. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Steve? Good evening. So let's talk about record keeping. What I found in August of 2019 is they left their admin page open on their webpage, exposing the donor records and adoption records of everyone the last 10 years. That's record keeping. Why don't this go to greyhoundfriends.org admin? They have fixed it and released a statement. They're not stating they are. Far from it. So that's what we are saying. They have fixed it because they're both side of the um, Sam and Terry, we don't know. It hasn't been a dog there since 2017. It was awful before. Awful. That's why we're here. 30 years. Here again. Gentlemen, anyways. I don't know. When did we say enough's enough? That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Kathy DeNorsha. My prepared speech is stuck on my broken computer, so I'll have to wing it. Um, I would like to address that comment. Can't. I can't, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to address two things. One, I started volunteering at Greyhound Friends in December 2017 when I retired. I worked at National Grid as an IT manager for 24 years. Um, it was my goal to volunteer there when I got out of the corporate rat race. So I've been there every week, sometimes multiple times a day. We've been cleaning, decluttering, organizing, rearranging furniture, setting up workspaces for the past year and a half. The place is spotless. We've painted, um, um, and the place looks great. I've done 25 loads of laundry, washing blankets. It's all ready for the dogs to come in. Um, as far as record keeping goes, we've implemented a new <coughs> shelter manager system. It's a state of the art software as a system we bought it. It's secure, it's um, cloud based, and it has everything we need to prevent some of the issues we've had in the past. You go in, you have a picture view of the shelter, what dogs are there, how long they've been there, all their records are available attached to that dog. Um, it also keeps track of all the donors. We don't keep our donor information on the website. Um, if uh, someone from the state or the town comes in, we can easily look up the dog and show them all the records right there. As part of the cleanup, we've taken all the records, set up an office, put all the records in file cabinets, locked up any personal confidential information. Um, so I think the record keeping is much better. So that's my two minutes. Thank that, you. That was your minute 57. Thank you. All right. Hi, my name is Bob Byrne. I'm really to thank you all for listening tonight. Um, I can't believe we're here. History speaks for itself. I think as a community, we failed these dogs in the past. And now you people are the voice of dogs for the future. Please. Do not allow Greyhound Friends to open a kennel in Hopkinton. They've proven to be untrustworthy, 
disregard rules and regulations, please, you're the voice for the dogs. Say no. Thank you. Next. Hi. Hi. I'm Stephen Kraft. Most of you guys know me. <laughs> I used to volunteer in Greyhound Trends for over eight years. I used to rescue senior dogs, 10 years or older. I brought them to my house. Through me. Don't look at that. Through me. I, I, don't, I don't know how that comes out. Mm -hmm. I've also been doing nature photography for 30 years. I rescued everything. Skunks, porcupines, possum, whatever it is. My friends call me, Steve, it's in my attic. I go and get it out. I did the same thing with dogs as well. And I volunteered for eight years. I've never seen anything. I used to walk in there all the time. It's clear. So, that's what I said to say about it. And I used to, like I said, I used to rescue dogs. You know I mean, I don't know if you guys have rescued animals. I rescue everything. This dog right here was 10 years old when I got it. She's going to be 15 years old. I hope that all of you in this room would do that kind of thing for any type of animal, whether a dog, whatever it is. Okay? <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening. Can you hear me? I speak very low. My name is Lillian Vullen. I live in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and um, I have two comments regarding sanitary conditions that go back to 2016. I adopted a senior dog, a 14-year-old coon hound named Titus, who had been there for over a year. Um, the dog at the time was staying at Holliston Meadows. That's where I met him. I don't know how long he was there. I don't know how much time he spent between Holliston Meadows and Greyhound Friends, but when I adopted him, I took him to my vet. He was found to have Ehrlichia and whipworms. All right, that's after a year. When I brought my dog that I had at home at the time to meet Titus at Greyhound Friends, we met in their exercise yard. The yard was littered with feces in various states of uh, desiccation, so it, obviously they had been there for a while. The reason I noticed it is because my veterinarian told me that dogs that came up from the south, like my current dog Polly, who's a coon hound, um, often have whipworms, and they're very difficult to eradicate. So when I saw the feces in the yard, I made note of it, and I was concerned. And that's really all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. develop and to make sure that we stay in compliance with, with um, protocols. We've devised numerous flowcharts and um, checklists to make sure that this stays in place. We haven't gotten a chance to test it yet. I came in in 2017 when the kennel had already been closed. I'm really excited to get the kennel open and running to make sure that we stay in compliance and that we follow these protocols that we work very hard to develop. Thank you. Beth Malloy, Hopkinton resident. Um, I love all these great stories that they have and the fact that they never saw any, you know, unsanitary conditions. But the bottom line is, the way those dogs came out of that kennel, there was something very wrong there. Emma was pulled out and she had hot worm and hook worm. This is, this is a kennel in our town, all right? This isn't somebody coming up from West, you know, Mississippi or something. And this happened over and over and over again. So they pull all these dogs out, most of them are sick, and how many times are we gonna let this happen? And how many times, how much man hours and money is this town gonna spend watching them? And Ms. Shepard was on the board. There's no change if she's the kennel manager. So right there, the letter that they wrote was not true. So I guess my question is, how many more times do we have to do this, you guys? And like, ma'am, um, it, it's, it's past ridiculous. That's all. Hi, my name is Kate Savage, and I don't really understand all the animosity that's going on here. Um, there were problems, we worked at it, we worked at it, we worked at it. And I have to say, you look at an organization 
that for two, over two years has been told, no, 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 no. And there's been a lot of, um, you know, acrimony. It takes bravery to stand up and to say, you know, we made mistakes, we're going to do it better. And we know people are going to be looking. I saw the isolation unit, and it looks really good. And I would say, you know, we have the NBR, and we have the town inspection, and I would say that these guys know what, which way is up. And they've been to the site several times. And they're saying, hey guys, you finally got it right. And if you finally got it right, I would say that we should still have our license. It's not a forever license. People are going to be popping in there all the time, so it's not going to be like a horror show like some people think it is. It's not. And that's all I have to say. I just want to say, you know, I think that we've done a good job. You guys are all done on that side? Yeah, sure. Now we are. We still got seven minutes. Well, I won't take up seven minutes, I promise. Um, I just want to say that um, I want to say to Karen Amy, who is leading Greyhound Friends, that I applaud her for actually admitting that there was wrongdoing. I think that that was probably not a very easy thing to do, and I think that that is brave, and I think that's really how an organization is finally going to get past this. Um, I would say two things. One is that Greyhound Friends doesn't actually need a kennel license to remain a charity. They continue to, they could continue to do advocacy work and just not have dogs. So I mean, that's a consideration. I just would simply ask Greyhound Friends to please um, carefully look at the people that stood by and allowed this to happen. They know there are still people there that are doing it, you know, that allowed this, that stayed silent. I mean, that's the thing that keeps me up at night. It's not just the, what the executive director did, it's that people knew, I mean, People knew this was happening and kept their mouths shut. And, um, you know, I just would ask them if they would please consider, um, you know, making a public statement that they will get rid of those people. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Terry Stifler. I'm actually from Holliston. Um, I mean, I mean, from Holliston, sorry. I'm nervous. <laughs> um, I was going from shelter to shelter to shelter to try to find a dog. And I was recommended to go up to Greyhound Friends to see what I thought of Greyhounds. Well, I fell in love with every single one of them. And I thought it was one of the best shelters I had been in out of all the shelters I was going to for weeks and weeks and weeks to try to find a dog. I, I know the leader of the shelter. She was a little tough uh, to deal with and on a personal level. But when she walked in there with the dogs, they were crazy for her. And she loved those dogs. And I know she was taking some of them in above and beyond the quantity she was supposed to because some of them were so hard to think about adopting out that they would have been euthanized if she hadn't taken them in. So she let her heart get ahead of her head. What I'm hearing from a lot of the people in the opposition is what's happened in the past. I think we always should give people another chance. They have gone above and beyond what I think should be required. I mean, the other shelters I've been in, if you want to go in and start to hound on some of them, not to use a pun there, but to hound on some of them, I mean, gosh, I think what they've done is above and beyond what should, you know, what needed to be done. And they've, they've tried to go through every hoop that you put in front of them. I think they should be given the chance to continue. I got a dog from them. She was the healthiest dog I've ever had. She's now gonna be 11, I got her when she was two. I haven't had many a problem with her, she's amazing. She still runs like a champ. My boyfriend got a dog from them, the same condition. He's even healthier than her, he's two years younger. But I'm just saying that I really think that everything I've been seeing has been breaking my heart, just wondering how many of these dogs that should have been brought into the shelter over these years have been euthanized because it wasn't available. So please consider bringing it back. Thank you. I've been volunteering the Bay Path for two and a half years, and three other volunteers that I have spoken to had left Greyhound because they could not stand the treatment of the animals that were there. My name is Debbie Murphy. I've been a volunteer, an employee, and an adopter for Greyhound Friends. I just 
as I watch this group tonight, I can understand both sides. But I've watched Great Aunt Friends now for the past two years donate their weekends, their nightlife, whatever they have to, in order to become what they should be, an example to all other kennels. And I really think that's what they are now. But without giving the chance to prove that, I, I think it's just a shame. They've written protocol, the state agencies have accepted it, and I just don't understand the opposition, why they wouldn't say give them a chance and, and let us screw up if we're gonna, everybody's gonna watch us. It's not gonna happen. They've worked too hard of their own time to, to make mistakes now. Do we still have more time? We go. Can I speak again? Three minutes. Uh, so, no, no, so let them, before you speak twice, make sure everyone's heard. Excuse me? Go ahead. Go ahead. This will be the last one on this side, and then you can have one on that side. Hi, my name is Barb Siegel. I was staff at Greyhound Friends before this all happened. I know what's happened. Uh, we loved those dogs. They came in so frightened. And we took such great care, got loving homes. I adopted. It's where I fell in love with them. I've seen other kennels. They don't come close to what it was. And these women have worked so hard to get back to where, to meet the standards that these people, I don't know if they're animal lovers or not, but to bring it back to the standards where it was. Straight to me, to me. Look at me when you talk. Don't right, look at that. Sorry, sir. It's just. I understand there's a lot of passion here, but keep it, it to there me. There is a lot of passion. We're going to stay professional. It's, it's hard because I love those dogs, and that's where it was, and gave them great care, and they got to go to homes. And the people that I worked with loved the dogs as these women here. All right? Thank you. Beth, last one? Yep. Um, why do we think that they don't deserve another chance? Three different times, the state had to step over the town of Hopkinton and put down a cease and desist on them. Three times. That's a shame on us, okay? So why do I think that they don't deserve another chance? There's three reasons why I don't think that they deserve a fourth chance. And that's... That's what I feel. All right. Thank you very much to both sides there. That'll wrap up our public comment. Uh, I will now invite board members to ask questions to Greyhound Friends and to the witnesses and commenters. Uh, board, any uh, questions? Mr. Nasser, we'll start with you. Um, <clears throat> yes, I would. I guess I would go with uh, Do you have a uh, veterinarian? on staff or someone that you would be using? We will not be having a veterinarian on staff. We'll be using Healthy Paws and Halston Animal Hospital. And um, we have Dr. Margaret Roman who will be releasing our dogs from ISO. Thank you. Ms. Coutinho. The last time I spoke about this, I didn't have a prepared statement. I was uh, very passionate, spoke right from my heart. I've, I've had dogs since I was a kid, and it's and it was I was very passionate about it, and um, and I said that um, I was disgusted, and I was very upset, that I was very proud for for decades that we had a rescue uh, center in our town, and then I was very disappointed and angry that um, uh, there were such so such problems. Um, I also said that um, I didn't want, uh, I, there was no way I could support a, um, a, a board or a group that, um, that actually was over, that oversaw the degradation of, of, a, of a place that I was so proud of. Um, uh, you know, it, uh, and I, it's funny, I was, there's some of the questions I was going to ask, I just, uh, just looked down and I, I had them right here. It's about how the, the, did the, you know, the, the changeover of the board and the oversight and all of that. I remember I, I, was, uh, I was actually looking forward to having a, an outside organization um, o oversee the, the operations, and, but you did mention the MSPCA and the, uh, and the state agricultural. That's, uh, that's, that's, um, uh, that helps. Um, I really don't have any more questions. I actually just looked down and I apologize to everybody because uh, I have some answers right here. Okay. I'll yield my time. Ms. LaPrenier. Well, my, one of my questions was who was going to be the veterinarian. 
staff over there. Um, I also have a question about monitoring for the town. Uh, we've had the fire department, the inspectional services, the Board of Health, the Hoppington Police Department go out there and look at what they've done and they have signed off on everything. Everything that has been asked of these people has been completed and done well. So I, I don't know what else we can ask of them. My concern now is in monitoring. I want to make sure that the town and that the people who monitor these kennels continue to monitor them on a spot check basis. And I guess that's all that I have to say. Mr. Herr. Mr. Meares, um, how many times a year can we possibly revoke a license? How many times a year? Once it's revoked, it's, um, it's gone. Well, okay, let's say, let's say we put the license back in, or leave the license in place tonight. Yes. And three months from now, I go for a jog down Saddle Hill Road, and I come back to my colleagues and say, this isn't right, I'd like to have another hearing. How many times can we do that? There's no limit. There's no limit, okay. Um, and to the, to, the, to the Greyhound folks, there are how many people on the board today? Five right now. Sorry? Five. How many spots do you have? Um, anywhere up to 15, I think. Spots on the board or spots board. to hold dogs? <laughs> no. how, many, how many positions on the board of directors? I think our limit is 15 in our class. 15. And you have five members right now? Yeah, we have been actively seeking additional board members, and we actually have a number of people, including veterinarians, who have said if we reopen, they would be interested. Okay. But not now. Yeah, I can understand why there might be some trepidation there. So, of the five that are on the board today, correct, and you're the president and you're the chair of the board, same thing, I guess. Uh, what was the involvement of these five three years ago? So three years ago, um, I and Jeffrey Schindler were members of the meet and greets committee. So we used to do volunteer work in Acton and Westford, bringing our adopted dogs to do breed advocacy. Um, at some point, we took roles, which was called a corporate member, which was like a little recognition. It meant we went and attended annual meetings, and we voted in directors as nominated and presented by the board. Um, so we did not have any access to non-public information. Um, it was kind of a once a year involvement type of thing. So, so uh, that, was me and Kathy, that was me and Jeffrey Schindler. Kathy Denarsha had no involvement until last year. Anne-Marie Armstrong had no involvement until last year. Peter Bloom joined the board in late 2017 and he was a sometime volunteer and adopter throughout the past. So in the, in the years that you and your other colleague were greeters, or however you describe that, was that at the facility here in Hopkinton, or was that elsewhere? In the no, that was in our out in our neighborhoods at Pennsylvania. Great Pennsylvania friends, but not necessarily in the kennel itself, or overseeing right. the kennel, or involved in the kennel itself. Right. We would stop by the kennel and volunteer to walk dogs. They had an open kennel policy. If they knew you, you <coughs> could be a person that was trusted to walk dogs around. So we would show up unannounced, see things. I never saw anything, and I and I do apologize for not hearing people who told stories and dismissing that just because I had never seen it. Okay. And so the, the current director, executive director, or whatever the title yeah. is. Yeah. Um, so you, your, your role in the past was what? I worked in the kennel part-time in many different roles. Um, I worked with the dogs, I worked in the office. Um, I did pretty much everything there off and on to over the last 20 years. And I, I believe you said earlier this evening when you spoke that you were sorry about some of the things that happened. So you saw some things, is that a fair statement? What I saw was the kennel declining in the past, say from maybe 2014, 15. And I saw people coming in and trying to present changes. So that's when I requested to join the board in 2016 because I had no, there was no way to make any changes as a part-time employee. You had to do your job or you had to leave. Those were your options. 
So I asked to join the board in 2016 to help facilitate these changes, and that's when I took on a leadership position. Then the director was removed from the organization, and I was kept on to keep things moving and renovations started. Okay. And you say it was in decline. What do you mean by that? You saw that it was I saw in more. We were bringing in different dogs. There were hound dogs being brought into a greyhound facility. There were too many dogs. There was not enough staff. Things were declining. What people saw over the past 20 years and stood up for, it was not the same thing towards the end of that cycle. Okay, so you saw a different thing, but what do you attribute that decline to? I don't know. It was not, it was management. It was okay. mismanagement. It was I mismanagement. Mean, it wasn't, okay. it, the, we had, we didn't have enough staff on, we had too many dogs. So you saw the mismanagement firsthand? There? Yes. Okay. And um, going forward, how, how are you as the executive director not going to allow the things that you saw to repeat? Because we're limiting the amount of dogs to a manageable amount first. Second, the kennel is already in good condition and will be kept up in good condition. Next, we have a board of directors who will be overseeing the management, which is very different. I'm not the founder. I'm an employee. It's also very different. Are the board positions voluntary? Yes. No one's paid? No one's paid. Okay. And nobody's been paid at Greyhound Friends in over two years. Okay. That's all the questions I have for now, because we're still in public yep. session, correct? Mm-hmm. For the hearing part. Um, Beth, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. So I hear what you're saying about three strikes and you're out, and four yep. strikes and five strikes. Uh, I'm also an animal lover. I'm sure you've seen my dog running around my, my yeah. yard. Um, so as an animal lover, I am someone that is, I'm not necessarily inclined to give people chance after chance after chance, but if this Greyhound Friends has turned itself like an Etch-a-Sketch and shook it and start from scratch, and their facilities are better than most, or at least up to par. And they are, they've kind of revamped their whole operation and they do adhere to everything that the state and local authorities mm -hmm. put out there for parameters. Would you still have a problem with them opening? I have two problems with them opening. I believe Ms. Shepard needs to be replaced because she was part of the original group and she was on the board. She just took a different position. Okay. So that's one thing I'd like to see happen. And the other thing is there's a $40,000 lien on the property. Um, I'd like to see that paid off prior to them bringing dogs in. I don't see where that has anything. Like, so we're talking uh, humane, sanitary, and record keeping. So. Okay, okay. Um, but inevitably, you and I and everybody, I'm sure everybody in this room, if there's another agency out here to promote and to save the welfare, I mean, uh, you know, preserve the welfare of X amount of dogs, whether it's one or 1,000, mm. that's what we want. We want dogs to be saved and rehomed and, and that. Um, so speaking to humane, sanitary, and record keeping only, Okay. if they are, so my, I just want to bring up to the, you know, I'm not speaking moving forward as far as everything that they've done in the past. Um, once we get into the deliberation, I have another couple of questions that I'll run by Mr. Mayeris, but as long as they're an upstanding member of the community and, and they're subject to random, which I would think would be increased um, inspections, by pop home. inspections, by Liz and by Bill and by the state and by whomever, I would think that they would, as long as they adhere to all the rules, regs, policies, cleanliness, welfare, humanity, record keeping, I would think that you'd probably be in favor of something like this. Take the term Greyhound Friends out of it, put Beth Malloy Friends, you would be in favor of that, I would assume. As long as somebody is keeping a really close eye, yep. um, I am a little concerned as to where the dogs are coming from. Yep. Okay. 
Um, they are not on the list of approved rescues to get the dogs from Florida. Chris. No back and forth. Nope. Uh, sorry. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Beth. All right. So if we're all set with um, public comment, I mean the board comment here. Mr. Mr. Kamalo? If I may, through may. the chair. Um, Mrs. Shepard. Yes. In your remarks, you pointed out that in the past it was do your job or move on. Right. You are now in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the facility. Yes. What is your message to the employees, the prospective employees? Do your job and do it right or you'll be fired. Okay. okay. We have uh, substantial lists, checklists and procedures that they will be trained and held to. All right, so now we will deliberate as a board. So we're, we're in a we public hearing, yeah. right? So let's just think this through a sec, because yeah. I'm not sure we're maybe done with going out. We can close the public hearing and still have some dialogue with anyone we wish to, correct? But that just kind of shuts down, or do we keep it just amongst us then? What do you think? If you're contemplating that you're going to have additional questions for, uh, for the witnesses or for the commentators, I would recommend that you keep the, uh, the hearing open. But we can still deliberate and make a decision inside the public hearing. Absolutely. We don't have to close it to make that decision okay. or deliberate, which is the normal practice that we follow. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So then I would like to, I have an, another question. So one of the things that concerns me with Greyhound Friends, if you have a 15 person, up to 15 person board, and you have five members on there right now, Mr. Mayor, is, is there a way that we as a board can limit their board of directors to exclude any past board members? Because I don't want Louise Coleman to show up on your board, and I don't want these other people that swept things under the rug to be swept under your board. I want you to open, I do, and I want you to open with a fresh start, knowing that you're gonna be watched probably closer than, than most other places. But if you're above boards and you're doing your job and you're doing it right, it should be no problem. Um, so I, however, have a problem having past board members that did allow this to happen to be on your board. That's my problem. So do we as a board have the ability to limit that? Well, let's ask the question. Will the, uh, will the licensee agree to a condition that no former board members will be allowed to serve on the board. Or employees. Um, yes, could we ask to limit, to specify a time limit just because there are former, former board members who left wishing things to be different that might eventually want to help. So this wouldn't be board members say between, I don't know what the dates are. This wouldn't be board members who were board members when it closed. But there were, part of the decline was people coming, trying to help, and leaving in frustration. Mm -hmm. And I would have to look at a past list to see, like, you know, mm -hmm. who would be hit if we did a blanket statement. But okay, we would so absolutely if, agree to If we yeah. were to include a condition that prohibited uh, any former board members from serving on the board without the prior approval of this board, would that be satisfactory to you? Yes. So, just to clarify for me, uh, my name is Jerry McCohen. Uh, You're an Lou attorney? Yes. Uh, Louise has been, I, I've personally spoken to her, written her letters. You are not to have any part of this. She understands through my last correspondence to her that uh, the next step is court. So she's not even supposed to come on there and feed the squirrels, which she was doing. She, she, I wouldn't be part of this if she was going to be part of it. Okay. And um, I believe they have specific, oh, the, the arrangement that she reached uh, previously prevents her from having any governance also. The governance agreement with the Attorney so, General prevents her from having any role with any so, so So the, so it, that doesn't stop her from being involved. She just can't be on the board. So we got a very extensive letter by her today telling us everything that she's done. Um, 
So you're but basically what you're saying, you don't want her on there to feed the squirrel, so you wouldn't be opposed to getting a restraining order. For I'm, the waiting. I, I'm ready to go. Okay. I'm, wait, I'm ready to go. I mean, so we another, so pick all our stuff up. Mr. Mieres, so we could put another stipulation that Louise Coleman is not to step foot on the property moving forward, or it would be a violation subject to, to shutting them down. Well, to ask the question again, would you accept that, that condition? Can you phrase it? I just want to make sure if she runs on the property to feed a bird. No, then, no. then she can be arrested for okay. trespassing. Yeah. So if we walk, so, so say, so Brian uses the example of jogging by. I'm not going to jog by. I might drive in. <laughs> <laughs> if I drive in and I see her with a, a rake, a shovel, and a, and a thing of dog food, putting dog food, which she's probably doing it out of the goodness of her heart, that would be, to me, a violation of what we're asking. If I drove by and I saw her in the woods, with a set of binoculars in there saying no one's there, I'm going to walk in. That's not a violation. But if she's, allow, if, she's, if she's a welcome and allowed person to come and volunteer or be employed, I'm all set. I'm happy to share with you a letter that says she's not to set foot on there. Uh, but if she, let's say she was in violation of something here. Now, I don't know what power you have to have her arrested. Uh, if, but if we I had don't, a court. I don't have the, the, the ability to have her arrested, but you do. Yeah, we don't have a TRO in place yet, but we could. Mr. Mayor, does that sound right? Sounds fine to me, as long as, um, okay. as the um, uh, licensee uh, is willing to accept yep. that kind of a And you are. Yes. So we're memorializing these add-ons here, yeah, so, indeed. right? So when we get to motion time, if we get to motion time, we don't miss any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And you, right now, presently, you have no dogs? No. So you have not had any violations for humanity, sanitary, uh, or record keeping? There's been none. No. Board, say anyone. So, uh, yeah, I, I was just happy to see it down to 15. And uh, did, you, did, they, did you put the, the larger kennels in? That, because I remember that was one of the things I was angry about before that you were asked to put the larger, larger crates in and, or kennels and, and they weren't. You know, it, it's, you know, and, and to me 15 can be manageable. I, I, my dog goes to, uh, goes to play dates, uh, but play time almost four times a week. My father would turn over his grave if he knew I did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I want to make sure she gets exercise. I have a Doberman. It's, slower runners than greyhounds, but she runs the same way. She needs her time. Uh, but I'm just, uh, you know, I'm glad to see that. And, 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 you know, I'm glad to see that you're, you're as passionate about this as I am to, 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 to run it the way any, any of the people on, on either side want it run. Um, I, was, I was fit to be tied before. I was so angry you know, that my the chair at the time had a four-page written statement, and I was just shocked that after a year and a half, that it didn't pass the inspection. It and I close. just and I just said, uh, you know, really, where's the heart? Where's the change? And that means that meant that the same people were still saying, okay, let's just put it, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll paint some throw pillows, and uh, and it's done. Um, I'm glad this time that you that you put the time into it and closed it down and didn't come back until you, you were able to pass and, and then with these uh, amendments I think at that I'd, I'd be uh, I'd be have, I'd be more inclined to uh, go along with it mr. her mr. Kamalo is this yours and my second go around with Greyhound friends and issues in our tenure here yes so for the public's information, Mr. Kamala has been with Hopkinton for 10. 10 years now. I've been serving on this board at different times. This is my fourth term. Uh, we did go through something many years ago to Beth Beloy's point. Uh, I think that was round three and rounds one and two may have been prior to my involvement in town government. Uh, but we've had this happen before, not to this extent and certainly not to the extent that the shelter was closed at that time. There was reprimands and we had uh, the animal control officer involvement, but we didn't seem to make a lot of progress. 
And obviously, we didn't make a lot of progress because here we are a few years later, maybe many years later, but still, and the place has been closed for a couple of years, and there's a lot of people in the room frustrated on both sides. And so, uh, but I do believe this is our second go around. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if, if I'm serving on this board, and I serve on other boards and other capacities in, in my life, um, including nonprofits at Dana Farber and elsewhere, um, if a board has an employee reporting to them, and that employee doesn't get the job done for whatever reason, it's the board's responsibility to address it. He's not gonna fire himself. My colleagues down in Boston aren't gonna fire themselves. It's the board's responsibility to take action and, and get, address something, put them on a corrective action plan, try and create a positive environment and solve the challenge. But obviously that didn't happen with the last board or the board was somehow handpicked to support people, I don't know. I don't know all those details. But that's how we would have to behave in this capacity here. If Ms. Lazarus reporting to Mr. Kamala, which she does, is that, <laughs> yeah, right? So if Ms. Lazarus reporting to Mr. Kamala sees Mr. Kamala doing something wrong, she is obligated to go past him and come to us. In corporate America, where I've worked for 30 years, Sarbanes-Oxley, which is this new, not new now, but you know, came out of the whole Enron thing, the whole reporting structure and financial securities and things along those lines. Sarbanes-Oxley requires that if the warehouse driver or the warehouse uh, stock person sees somebody stealing material and the branch manager or the operations director or whomever doesn't take action, that, that driver of that forklift truck is still obligated by law to report up, okay? And what frustrates me the most is we're here tonight we still have people involved that didn't report up and they're still involved. I'm not pointing at you, I'm just in general here. I just want to get through this. Um, and maybe that's a training thing or a lack of knowledge about the responsibilities we all have in our worlds and our different roles, but that is going forward absolutely what I would expect. Is I don't care if it's the person, I don't know how it's organized and you know who does what role and what role is important, what role is not as important, what have you. Every role is important for reporting violent or uh, abuse, and every role is important for reporting up anything they see that is possibly wrong. And I don't, that didn't go on in the past. That wasn't the culture of the past. That's the culture of corporate America. It's the culture of the town of Hopkinton. It's the culture of, well, maybe not the culture of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but whatever. It's it's expected, and we expect that. I certainly, as one member, would expect that. So I'm trying to get to the point where I can support reopening this organization. But like when we have conversations with people that come before us asking for an alcohol license, that's some serious stuff. We give an alcohol license to somebody, and if they sell, we had it tonight, they sell alcohol to a minor, they're coming back in here and all heck's gonna break loose. This situation from earlier tonight hasn't resolved itself yet. We didn't close that for a very specific reason. I'm not quite sure what we should do there. So we're gonna maybe figure that out, the five of us will figure that out. But the same thing has to apply when we're caring for dogs. It's the same thing that applies when we're caring for children in daycare facilities. And I want to support and give everybody a shot to make this happen. But I got to be clear that that's why I asked the question, how many times can we revoke it? If three weeks from now, if I do jog by um, and I see something that doesn't look right, I'm not going to be afraid to quote report up. I'm going to call the chair and I'm going to call the town manager and I'm going to call the chief of police. And maybe all heck's gonna break loose three weeks from now. That's kind of a lousy way to start up, but that's the pressure you gotta understand that we're likely going to apply to make sure this is gonna play out if it plays out at all. And to just to build on that, if Brian's gonna go and check on it, I'm gonna check on it, John, Irfan, Mary Jo are gonna check on it, the police are gonna check on it, and the entire right side of this building right now are gonna come and check on it. So it's gonna be a tough, if, if we do, I, I guess if we don't re revoke the license, right, because we're not issuing a license, if we don't revoke the license and you move forward, you're gonna be under a microscope. And it's not necessarily for a bad thing. You know, everybody has agendas. My feeling in my heart is that everyone in here is here for the right reason. And they're all, looking like you're you're in a tough spot you are if you came in as 
dachshund friends with with a different different name and 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 the the people in front of us probably wouldn't be here right now but your name is not gold in the dog loving community and it's up to you to change it and it's up to us as a board to monitor it it's us to it's up to us as a town to monitor it because there are people I love dogs but I'm not one of these people that feel that dogs are as important as a child and they're passionate about it my thought on children is they're pretty important I'm a nurse I'm a mandated reporter as well if I saw something go wrong with a child it's going to be taken care of it's going to be reported at the very least and that's how these people and most people in this room feel so you're up against it and if you're up for the challenge I mean we're, we're being very honest and upfront with you just like Mr. Hurst said about all the, the liquor licenses, the bars, the liquor stores, things like that. They know there's no wiggle room, there's no gray area. And there's no get it right next time, we'll see you in 30 days. So it's very, very serious. And I'm sure you know that. I mean, you have a, 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 a it's, it's a massive undertaking that you've, that you've taken. So I appreciate the work that you've done. And I'll turn this over to Erfran. So. I can understand the frustration um, that we've, you know, everything that we've heard on the board and from uh, from the public. Uh, here we are again. It's uh, there's been several instances, and uh, ultimately it came down to the attorney general getting involved. And I understand the frustration, but when I sit here and I and I and I listen to the standards that we're supposed to be paying attention to. I think the question I ask is, do the unsanitary conditions exist currently? And at the moment, there's no dogs, so no. Um, I support my fellow board members um, in keeping a very close eye because, you know, what's happened in the past camp is not going to be forgotten. And it is something that we want to, uh, we want to keep an eye on. Uh, we can't let that kind of thing happen in our town. Mary Jo, anything? Well, like, like I said, uh, it, it's difficult to say no because every single thing and every single inspector that we have for the town has signed off and said that everything has been taken care of. But uh, another thing that I did say was that it needs extremely close monitoring, and we will do that. As a town, we will do that. Mr. Chair, I would suggest that we close the public hearing, so I move that we close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on the closing of the public hearing? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Hearing none. Okay. The public hearing is now closed. So based on what you said earlier, we need to go back out. So. Right. Right. So we're all done talking with you guys. But please stick around. <laughs> All right, so what do you think, Mr. Hurd? I'm a little confused about the five member, the five members on the board at the moment with the 15 member charter, perhaps from up to 15, maybe it says, I don't know. Um, on one hand, I mean, is that because no one wants to help, you know, or is it because the way they've had been through obviously some very difficult times and so they need to recruit and rebuild that a little bit so I'm hoping it's the latter trying to be the optimist here about this stuff but um, that's a, a concern um, you know I believe in looking in people's eyes and looking into the soul and seeing what's going on and and while I'm a little frustrated there's still uh, some connection to the past uh, I think uh, there's good evidence that the the connection in some ways kind of makes sense because you you know you can't fix what you don't know is broken you can't you can't fix something that you don't know you're like while I don't like that I have a hard time saying this. while I don't like that I think in other ways it makes sense because then 
they know what they can't do again, obviously, right? So you and I were both saying, completely clean, nobody involved, no connection, get it all done. And they made an argument that, you know, somebody's here, saw it, saw the bad, and now we're not gonna let the bad come back. And, and I can hear that too. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of backing off that absolutely nobody involved mm -hmm. piece. Uh, because I've, again, looking in people's eyes and listening to what people are saying, and I, I feel a little bit better about that. Um, at the end of the day, you know, and this, this reminds me of a situation I had at literally at Dana-Farber many years ago. I was the chairman of this board inside the Institute, and uh, our, we were fundraising through the marathon, as you guys know I run that thing, and we're used to. Um, and we were thinking about going 501c3, like the Pan Mass Challenge went out with 501c3. And so for six months, I got caught up in this debate at Dana-Farber about all the business issues and this and that and bylaw and the number of board members we're going to have, yada, yada, yada. I spent six months trying to organize this nonprofit business, basically. Um, and I took my eye off the ball. But one day, not, not knowing it, one day I got out of an elevator and out came a wheel, or I was getting on an elevator at the Institute, and out came a wheelchair. And tied to that wheelchair were two balloons. But there was nobody in the wheelchair. And a mom and a dad were pushing an empty wheelchair out of the elevator and going somewhere. And I thought to myself, where's the kid? Where's the child with the cancer? And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, I completely lost my sight of what I'm supposed to be doing here. I'm supposed to be here to help raise money for cancer research, period. All this other stuff is stuff, right? And uh, it helped me a lot, kind of refocus and get going back again to what we should be doing. And I think maybe the same situation's gone on here a little bit too, in that a lot of people have gotten very energized but are we really, really energized about the dogs? I don't know. I don't own a dog, so I can't speak to that passion, but obviously a lot of other people do, and I certainly respect that. So I'm of the opinion, given that we've got opportunities to do this again if we have to, but we probably wouldn't do it again, we'd just be done, uh, to give it a go. But I will go for the job. That is for sure. Mary Jo. I've had dogs all my life, and I am definitely a dog lover. And I really want to see constraints on, on this program. And I will definitely be out there checking things out. Mr. Catino. For me, my, uh, my outrage came from the last time the they had almost 18 months to clean up the place and it seemed like the same people were involved that, that it was a smoke and mirrors yeah we'll just try and try and get it cleaned up and i don't think that they knew how serious we were and how angry they got some of us and and, and they, how angry they got me and why i made some of those statements that i did for the oversight and for uh, for for a complete change and this time, closing down, you know, and, they, and they didn't pass the inspection the day, the day they came to our meeting. I was insulted. I was absolutely insulted that they, that they came and didn't even pass the inspection. This time, I feel that all those points were hit. They, you know, they reduced it to 15, the right size kennels, that, that the they understood that how serious we were. And I think that with the statements that we're making today and those other changes we're looking for, we, um, uh, we, can, we can try to have a, um, an organization that, that hopefully in the future can, can be resurrected and, and a place that we can uh, hopefully be proud of again. Mr. Nasrullah. You know, I echo everything that every, my, my select board members are saying, um, we can't forget the past. We know that what, what's happened before. Um, but you know, when I look at our regulations, the regulations that you had read at the beginning of this, it said nothing about removing the entire board and who's involved. And that, I, I, I certainly understand the reaction that, okay, if these people did it before, we can't let them do it again. But I'm not hearing anything that throughout this whole thing that there currently exists any 
reasons for revocation. Um, what I do feel is that, and I think we've all said it, you want to take a, you want to take a jog by. I would have gone for a bike ride, but I can't do that now. Um, you can ride in my truck. <laughs> but uh, I think we want to keep an eye on it. Um, but I don't presently. I don't see a reason why would why would we would revoke their license. Yeah. So agreed. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on your toes. You did not step on my toes. Um, <laughs> so before. going off what Mr. Gatino said. I wasn't outraged when you guys came a year ago. I wasn't outraged. I gave you no second thought when, when that report from Deputy Chief Bennett came here and, and you didn't have hot water and you didn't fix anything, nothing on that. I'm like, well, we're gonna have condos there soon. They're gonna shut that down and develop it. But uh, I wasn't furious. It's a business decision. That's what you, know, you guys just, to me, when you came in front of us, you're like, well, good enough. let us go or off we go. And off you went. Um, I'm not someone that will generally give many second chances. I'm pretty stern in my convictions. Um, once I have a decision in my head, it takes a lot to change it. Um, I was not part of the board when Mr. Kati I'm sorry, Mr. Hur and Mr. Kamalu did sit through your two or three, or the, or the Greyhound friends, two or three prior issues. Um, if the permit for you guys is to stay open and we allow you guys to stay open and it's not revoked by the mm -hmm. citizens petition, if you're here before us on a violation that's substantiated by anybody with merit, I will have no remorse whatsoever to pull your permit. None. None. I won't feel bad even a little bit. Uh, I'm good at that. I work in the prison. <laughs> <coughs> so um, I'm not speaking for the board. I'm saying if something before May comes before me as the chair of this board, I try not to use the term I. I would assume we, but I will push to shut it down. So Mr. If Chair, you, I'd like to try and craft a motion here that makes sense given that we, well, I shouldn't say that we, anything. I would like to craft a motion that while it, it doesn't, we don't act on the citizens petition, Mr. Mayores, uh, we do stay any further action pending Greyhound Friends Inc's uh, compliance with conditions we set forth this evening. Does that make sense? In other words, I'm looking for a motion from our esteemed council here. It's an affirmative motion to put the compliance in place, but also doesn't act on the petition to pull the license. I have another question when you're done with the motion. Yeah. If I may, through the I, I, chair. I'm, okay, go ahead. I'm almost done. You understand what I'm saying, right? I'm, I'm doing my best. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So if I can just jump in, this has nothing to do with the motion. And when I said, you know, you're going to have people pop in, we also need to have some type of common sense as far as like if I was one of these people that were anti, there has to be some type of limit. Like I couldn't come and tour your facility three times a day looking for something wrong, looking for a pile of dog crap. No more asking. Um, so it's got to be within reasonable limits. That would be determined by an entity that can determine where, where caring and uh, where the line between caring and depression. <coughs> Lies. May I make a statement to that? No. Okay. Thank you, though. <coughs> so, mm -hmm. all right. I'm obviously just made this up, so if it, <coughs> if it doesn't quite capture everything, let me know. Pursuant to section 62 7.g.b.2d, 
Greyhound Friends Inc. kennel license be amended to provide, one, no board member from Greyhound Friends Inc. who served on or before the date of its closure in February 2017 shall be eligible to serve on the board without the prior approval of the select board after a public hearing. Two, the board shall take all reasonable steps, that should definitely say the Greyhound Friends Board, shall take all reasonable steps to prevent Louise Coleman from being present on the Greyhound Friends property, including as necessary taking any legal action to obtain a no trespass, restraining, or comparable court order to effect that result, and that the select board continue its deliberations to a future date. Yeah. Okay, so we... So I will make the motion as stipulated by town council. I'll second that. So now I'd like to deliberate that motion. Okay, so let's, any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so interpret that now, Ray, for the lay person here, like me. Okay, so the two things you asked about and we asked, we asked if they would accept are, would they accept a condition that no member, um, no board member from the Greyhound Friends who served on or before February 2017 shall be eligible to serve on the board without the prior approval of the select board. Mm -hmm. In a public, posted public hearing. public hearing. Okay. Okay. They said they would accept that. We also asked if they would accept a condition that said the Greyhound Friends Board shall take all reasonable steps to prevent Louise Coleman from being present on the Greyhound Friends property, including as necessary taking legal action. I'm not exactly sure what that legal action, the form of that legal action is, so I left a little wiggle room here. No trespass restraining or comparable court order. I don't know what you have in mind, but there it is to that result. So, um, um, that the section that I refer to in the in the um, it should probably say pursuant to section of, of the of the town's general bylaws. As I say, I'm making this up as I go. Uh, general bylaws. That provision allows you to enter. Uh, here, let me just read it. It says the board may suspend or revoke the kennel license or may take such other action to regulate the kennel as it deems prudent or may dismiss the petition. So uh, I'm focusing specifically on may take such other action to regulate the kennel as it deems prudent. It gives you the authority to impose those conditions and I think it makes sense just as a, 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 an administrative matter to have those conditions attached to the license so that uh, the license at the, at the town clerk's office will specifically show those conditions. So if anybody wants to see their license, uh, the conditions will be attached to it. And, and those conditions are not an overreach of this board's authority, in your opinion? That was my concern. <clears throat> yeah. They are not an overreach of this board's authority because the, the licensee agreed to them. Okay, so then I think it would be appropriate during this, we're, we're, we're out of the public hearing, but we're in a public meeting, so it's all a matter of record, that, that, that the chair go to the uh, license holder and ask them here tonight, to again, agree to the terms that we're talking about in this motion. So hearing the motions read by our town council, those motion, are you amenable to those motions and an agreement? Yes, thank okay. you. I'm sorry? Yes. So we have a motion and it's seconded. Are we ready for a vote? Looks like Mr. Kamalo has something to say. If, uh, through the chair, question for Ray. W would you mind explaining the last bit of the motion where they are continuing the deliberations? This was, re this was uh, uh, requested uh, by Mr. Hurd. Yes. Um, I take that to mean that um, it, the, the board could, at some future time, um, impose additional conditions if it deemed it to be necessary based on the hearing that it was already 
concluded. If new information, if the board wants to take action based on other new information that was not heard today, they still would have to open a, a, a new hearing to make some additional changes. But if, um, if at some point the board were to conclude that that based on the information that, that was it heard today, that, that it should have um, imposed additional conditions, it could do so without it. So it's my motion, if you would, Mr. Chair. So could you repeat my motion from top to bottom one time, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, we gotta get this right. <laughs> I move, so your motion is I move, move that we adopt the following order. Pursuant to section 62-7.g.b.2 D of the town general bylaws, we order that the Greyhound Friends Inc. kennel license be amended to provide one, no board member from Greyhound Friends Inc. who served on or before the date of its closure in February 2017 shall be eligible to serve on the board without the prior approval of the select board after a public hearing. Two, the Greyhound Friends Board shall take all reasonable steps to prevent Louise Coleman from being present on the Greyhound Friends property, including, as necessary, taking any legal action to obtain a no trespass, restraining, or comparable court order to effect that result. And that the select board continue its deliberations to a future date. That is my motion. And it was seconded. Okay. Is, there, to second is there any more, <clears throat> any further board discussion before we put it to a vote? Hearing none. So, all in favor, state aye. 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 All opposed? And all abstention. Hearing none. Eric, so you guys have your license with those stipulations. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. And thank you very much <laughs> to the other you, side as well for the citizens' petitions for caring enough to put something like that. I think, yeah, as you said, everybody's on the same yeah. side. Thank you, gentlemen, and ladies, for very nice to meet you. Always a pleasure to listen to you. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Good seeing you. So, no, you guys keep an eye on him. Please keep an eye on him as best you can. No. Jeez, let's not let it happen again. All right, so our next Reporting. point of business. Oh. They did everything they said. So, guys, if you guys can just move out, we have more business to take care of. Plenty of room out at the sidewalk. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Our next order of business is the Legacy Farms Host Community Agreement Amendment. Thank you for such horror. The Select Board will review and consider executing a proposed. Sixth Amendment to the host community agreement with Legacy Farms LLC, so as to one bring its terms to governing the provision of affordable housing units into conformity with the town's recently adopted Osmud zoning requirements, and two allow a portion of restricted land required in the Osmud zoning district to, to be devoted to cultural <coughs> uses. Mr. McDowell, sorry for the delay. Thank you for your patience. It was interesting. Yeah, if you if you were here at six thirty, we could have taken you then. A lot of passion, <laughs> Mr. Kamala. Uh, Roy McDowell from Legacy Farms. Yeah, um, we shared with the board the copy of the existing HCA, which includes all the amendments up to Amendment 5. We also specifically said a separate uh, document highlighting the, the two changes that are included in Amendment 6. And by way of explanation, uh, these amendments are coming before the board uh, following a town meeting vote that then requires two things to happen. One, 
the amendment six as proposed confirms the zoning changes that were approved at town meeting. So we want to make sure that the host community agreement reflects those zoning changes. Number two, the parcel that is earmarked for the International Marathon Center under the current zoning agreement or the current uh, host community agreement uh, counts towards the 500 acres that is required for restricted land following the rezoning. Now that we have added the recreational use, the parcel is not in line with that formula. And therefore, the proposed change in Amendment 6 brings this parcel back to count towards the restricted land. Important. So what do you need from us, Mr. Kamalu? Um, if the board has any questions, um, uh, we're here to answer those questions. The specific request is that the board vote to authorize the chair to execute Amendment 6. the board have any questions? Mary Jo? I, uh, I've been reading this over and I have no problem with the cultural part of it at all. But what about the affordable housing? senior housing development piece. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that? The affordable housing piece? Yes, uh, under the current uh, site plan review and the master plan special permit, there will either be one of two things, either a specific payment in lieu of affordable housing, those parameters have already been established by DHCD, or uh, commensurate housing to be either acquired or built off-site in Hopkinton. If you do off-site housing, does that mean that you would give the town an amount of money well, for off-site housing, or will you develop off-site housing? Well, again, two options. One is money could be paid into an account to the town, specific dollar amounts for a units. Then the town would have that for the purposes of building affordable housing. That's one option. Another option is one could either buy or build affordable housing within the community, which would then be sold as affordable housing, so it could be counted towards the town's inventory. And how, how would a amount for each unit be established? It, how much it, would you have to give the town for each unit? It, it's already established. And how is that? How is I, that I think uh, Elaine would know better, but I think it's the equivalent of a three-bedroom unit. And I can't remember if it's 210 or okay. $230,000. It's in the agreement. I'm sorry, then how much? It's in the, it's in the text. <clears throat> oh, it's in here? Yes. Was that 260000 Equal to the purchase price of a three-bedroom home that is affordable to a qualified affordable housing unit purchaser as contained in the Department of DHCD's local initiative program guidelines. So it's calculated based on DHCD's requirements. Okay. Mr. Hart? So, uh, a couple of questions if I could. Mr. Kamala, you recommend we, we adopt both of these members of this amendment? Both provisions of the amendment? Yes, subject to perhaps following up on uh, um, Mary Jo's question. Um, I think the, the underlying concern uh, in those questions is that the amount identified well, can barely, I, if I may finish, can, can barely purchase a unit in Hopkinton. And affordable units in Hopkinton don't come regularly. No, I understand. So what is, the, I think the main concern is, practically speaking, how do we get to the affordable units? Well, I, I've spent a lot of time with Ray Mieros on this issue. Yeah. And Ray's interpretation of the law is, if you contribute money, just for argument's sake, you have to follow the specific dollar amount guidelines of DHCD. If you do that, then you qualify to do that. If you choose to do units, it's going to be, I believe, a commensurate unit to what's being built. So I think the guidelines are already there. Yeah. Uh, 
practically speaking, therefore, uh, again, the goal is to provide affordable housing. Um, I understand that. And, and I think what, 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 what I'm taking from Mary Jo's question is that perhaps the preference, first and foremost, is to provide the housing and that providing money be the last option. No, I understand the preference, but my understanding of the law is the developer has the option to do either. So the developer has the, holds the decision there? My understanding, again, going over with Ray Maris, the law says that, yes. There was town, there was town, town meeting. There yeah, was, I think, option like 46 or 47 or something. Yeah. That's what we voted on at town meeting. So, so, so Mr. Kamala, you, you support the amendment and its provisions, correct? Correct. Elaine, do you support the amendments and the, and the it's identical to what was adopted in the zoning bylaw at town meeting. So you agree with this as well? So that's your recommendations to adopt? Yes. And you support this amendment the way it's written? I have no choice. It was voted at town meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say If you want me to change this the way I'd like it, I'd be happy to do that. But I, I can only do what town meeting voted. Okay. So you're good, basically. That's what it is. Yeah, for me, the, the, the recreational parcel change was, was very important. And, and the rest of it, to, to the point that everybody made, was it's, it's, it's moved because town meeting stated what's going to happen. As far as the recreational parcel, I discussed this with uh, Ray Mieros also. And we're more than happy to come back at a future date and support the recreational parcel with the town. And if it's 26.2, we're more than happy to support that as well. Building the hockey rink. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nasrullah. I am satisfied with everything I've heard. I think the um, town meeting, the town meeting spoke. Let's get the motion. Brian set the motion. Okay. Uh, I don't have the motion. Oh, I have the motion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Kamalo, you did not give us a, a, uh, a motion for this one. There is a motion. It's, hmm? in it, uh, it's buried like right above the... It's, it's right here. Ask the town manager to explain. Mr. Kamalo, you explain why there's no motion in our motion staff. <laughs> oh, you, no, you gave me the motion. There's a motion. He's looking no, 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 at... No, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. you can give me the motion. Yeah. Yes, you did. My mistake. I'm sorry. Mr. Kamalo, would you like to explain why Mr. Catino made a mistake on that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve amendment number six to the host yes. community agreement between Legacy Farms LLC and the town of Hopkinton and to authorize the chair to sign the amendment. Chairman. The chairman to assign the amendment. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Carried. Good. Thank you. Thank I've, you. Signed, I've signed one if I could swap one with you. What? I've signed this if I could swap one with you. Good by me? Good by him? Yeah. We'll, also, we'll sign the one that you have. All right. We're signing that. Also cross sign. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So hearing that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any further discussion, which I would hope there is none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Thank you, everyone. Don't you go and sign that. Brandon, you're signing that. All right. And then roll.